coming to you live from the Tokyo Dome. This is Nick Charles in Tokyo, Japan, where one of the most confounding things in sports history, certainly recent boxing memory, has just occurred. James Buster Douglas, a virtual unknown, given absolutely no shot, has dethroned the seemingly invincible Mike Tyson. It happened in 10 devastating and, as we said, alarming, confounding rounds. Let me try to take you back into the ring. Douglas and Tyson came out, and Douglas with a 12-inch reach advantage and a good jab. He seemed to have little else but that. But he got it all going for him, dictated the pace and the flow of this fight, and the champion was frustrated. He could never get into it. T uh, Douglas, what he did so well is he created, he got some respect from the champion. Then he created some doubt. Tyson's eye began to swell by the fourth, fifth round. And then he created what I would call fear. Douglas had a tremendous round. Tyson needing a knockout on most cards to win it just about seemed to have it in the eighth with a thunderous right uppercut. Uh, he was going for the home run punch, it seemed, because Tyson couldn't put anything together. But he went for the home run bomb and landed one squarely on the chin of Douglas, dropped him. And then what seemed to be an agonizing wait. We thought it was all over. Douglas wouldn't rise. They declared him saved by the bell. It's a controversy here. It seemed like a long count. Perhaps Mike Tyson didn't go immediately to a neutral corner, and thus the referee either didn't begin the count then as soon as Douglas dropped, or he he had to restart or he stopped the count for some time but those two or three beats and I didn't have a watch on it seemed to cost Mike Tyson his championship he was out of it for so long Douglas came back dealt with the adversity in the ninth and in the tenth rocked the champion put Tyson down his mouthpiece mouth, mouthpiece dangled it was one of the most horrific sights uh, you could imagine because again nobody expected it. that'll do it for now from the Tokyo Dome we thank HBO for their facilities time and help I'm Nick Charles reporting for CNN let's go back to Atlanta Thank you for joining us for one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. More on CNN Sports Late Night. I'm Hannah Storm. An amazing episode. We're going back now to Eric Clemens in Tokyo. Eric? Eric is uh, coming up in just a couple of seconds here, He's trying to organize himself. I'm sure no one covering the fight was prepared for this kind of a result. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Certainly nobody we know. Uh, Eric uh, camped out outside uh, former heavyweight champ Mike Tyson's locker room at the Tokyo Dome. He's standing by with the number one contender, Evander Holyfield. Right, we're back at the Tokyo Dome with the number one heavyweight contender, Evander Holyfield, on hand to look at what many thought would be a Mike Tyson victory. Instead, of course, it turned into one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight history. First of all, Evander, let me ask you, are you surprised by the outcome? Well, not really surprised. I, I came into this fight with an open mind that I was going to fight uh, the winner of the match because my goal is to be the heavyweight champion of the world, not just to fight Mike Tyson even though, you know, the money was dependent on Mike Tyson. Well, how do you, what do you think is the main reason? What do you think is the main reasons for Buster Douglas pulling this upset off? He kept Mike Tyson at bay pretty much from the start to the finish of this fight. Well, well James Buster Douglas came in to win. And when uh, an individual make up in the mind that he came to win, it's going to be a good fight. He had the skills that necessary and had the desire. And that was one to fight for him. Of course, you guys don't put your minds on losing very much. If you're the champion right now, you've just lost. What goes through a guy's mind when you've, when you've lost a fight like this in your opinion? Well, uh, well, in my opinion, I think you have to go back and regroup, and you, uh, you look at your films, and, and you try to put your state of mind how you were feeling in the fight. Did you get off first, or did the other guy dictate the pace? And usually, when you, use the, uh, when you lose the fight, uh, you don't fight your fight. And, and the fact is, Bubba Douglas fought his fight this time. Mike Tyson didn't fight his fight. Buster seemed to exploit what weaknesses Tyson had, and weakness in Tyson is, is a strange term there because most people thought he had none. Did you know of these weaknesses in Mike Tyson all along that were exploited tonight? Well, everybody have a weakness, and the weakness is not fighting your fight. And Mike Tyson didn't fight his fight, and Buster Douglas fought his fight because it's almost impossible two fighters to fight, they fight when they're in the ring, and especially when one man is tall and one man is short. All right, you expect to get the shot next at Buster Douglas for the championship. Uh, would it bother you a lot if Buster Douglas gave Mike Tyson a rematch before, before June, the, the scheduled date of your, your fight with Mike Tyson, supposedly coming off in Atlantic City? Oh, yes, it will, yes. I've been waiting in line for a long time. I've been very patient, and I'm the number one contender. And Tyson had his chance, and he, and he lost. And I feel that it's only right for me to get my opportunity. All right, Evander, thanks a lot for being with us. Evander Holyfield joining us live here from the Tokyo Dome, and we'll have more updates on the biggest upset in heavyweight history, James Buster Douglas over Mike Tyson here at the Tokyo Dome to become the new undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Let's go back to Sports Center. Okay, thanks, Eric. Yeah, Holyfield might not mind being a little patient if he thinks Tyson can win a rematch. I mean, a lot more money for Holyfield. Sure, and uh, Holyfield not surprised? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. He's the only one in the universe.
All righty, back to our market. time. Nelson Mandela's release tomorrow has spurred calls to end U.S. Inc. Defeat in his professional career. More on the fight later in headline sports. Ahead in the man they said couldn't be beaten was flat on his back. Tom Nettles joins us now to tell us what went wrong with the champ. Carly, it was really kind of hard to believe. It sounds impossible when you hear about it, but looking at it, really, it was very believable. The man who seemed invincible was beaten and beaten badly by one James Buster Douglas, who had won 29 of 30 pro fights, but was an underdog to the point that the only betting line in Las Vegas had him at 42 to 1. How did he do it? Well, he used a big 12-inch reach advantage, keeping Tyson outside with a stiff and effective jab. He also beat Tyson to the punch on virtually every exchange. He also escaped a near knockout himself when he seemed to lose concentration late in the eighth round, took an uppercut, which sent him down for a serious nine count. But when the bell signed for the ninth round, he was in charge again. And by the tenth and final round, it was just a matter of time for Tyson, who finally went down and out after the way he described it, a five-punch combination. Believe me, that's what it really was. Here comes a wobbly, obviously dazed Tyson out of the ring. Following the fight, you see the left eye nearly swollen shut. He looked thoroughly beaten, folks, and he was. Douglas was absolutely on target for 10 rounds as he just beat Tyson, as I said, to the punch at every single exchange. Now, if you saw the fight, and without taking anything away from Douglas, I think, at this point, it was not the same Mike Tyson that we're used to. The guy had won 37 in a row. There was absolutely no movement, none of the kind where he jumps around like this and everything. He just sort of stood there, boom, kept taking the jab and never got inside. Could have been lack of training. Could have been taking uh, Douglas a little bit too lightly. He got rid of his longtime trainer, Kevin Rooney, a year ago. That might have had something to do with it. There'll be a lot of questions asked of this one. It was that puzzling and that shocking. A rematch? Donald Trump says he wants one for one of his casinos in New Jersey. We'll have much more, of course, in sports. This was a puzzling night, and like I say, wow. I don't think it's an understatement to say, or an overstatement to say, the biggest upset in boxing. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah. Big sports story. I yeah. was really surprised. The crowd really kind of strange in Japan, too. Very sedate. That's very, the way they uh, yeah. uh, watch sport, sporting events. And in one way, this big moment in sports was sort of <laughs> lost, because here you got all these people sitting there going, yeah. Huh? And, and not only that, but they were used to Tyson. I think he fought there twice before, coming out and finishing people in right. one and a half, two rounds. And so this was not at all in the script. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, we'll have a lot more, like I said, later. All Right, Tom, thank you. Well, kids in Chicago are getting high. Scott? What we refer to affectionately as a, another stiff. Mike Tyson was fighting in Tokyo, but boy, did he ever He was supposed to be a stiff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bruins and Trojans had Douglas fight in Tokyo, and oh, if you haven't found out yet, you'll find out what happened. The Saturday Sports Page is brought to you by Wells Fargo Bank, the outfit that's been coming through for Californians longer than any other bank. Wells Fargo comes through again. Unfortunately, we can't show you the video, but boy, there was a fight tonight that's going to go down as one of the greatest upsets in boxing history. A journeyman fighter named James Buster Douglas out of Columbus, Ohio, knocked out heavyweight champion Mike Tyson in the 10th round to take the champ's three titles away. Douglas was in command throughout the fight. The champ's one chance came at the end of the eighth when he knocked Douglas down. The champ in his corner thought that Douglas was down longer than 10 seconds, but the referee ruled otherwise, and Douglas was saved by the bell. After that, Douglas went back on the assault. Tyson suffered a swollen left eye, the first time he had had an injury of any sort. And in the 10th round in Tokyo, Douglas hit Tyson with a series of punches, sending the champion to the canvas, and Tyson never got up. Tyson falls to 37-1, and one. Douglas 34-1. and one. We have this reaction from the new champ. Well, I was determined, you know, and uh, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you feel it? Did you feel that, uh, that you established doubt in his mind early in the first four or five rounds? Oh, I, 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 had, I had nothing to put on my mind. I knew if I did what I, if I stayed, stayed in some focus, I wouldn't get frustrated, you know, that I would become heavyweight champion. I think, I think that uh, I was hurting early. But you know, he's a strong man. And he's gonna take a lot of shots. You got to try to make a tree. And then you're gonna basically chop that shit out. 29 years old and on top of the world. Moving to Championship of the world. Also. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the ESPN Sports Center. I'm Tom Meese. Well, for those of you who think you've seen and heard it all, think again. Half a world away in Tokyo, Japan, a nameless heavyweight named James Buster Douglas from Columbus, Ohio, was seen as the latest sacrificial lamb for the undisputed heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. But when the day was done, the lamb had done the slaughtering. And after 10 rounds of landing two punches to every one that Tyson landed, James Buster Douglas 
was crowned as the new undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Some still photographs in the eighth round. The two fighters tying each other up. Then Tyson lands an uppercut, sending Douglas down to the canvas on his back. Douglas got up at the count of nine and was saved by the bell. Round 10 after a fabulous ninth round, Douglas and Tyson stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and look at that left. It was part of a left-right-left -left combination that Douglas landed on Tyson. Down goes the champ. He was counted out. Could not get back to his feet before the count of 10. So James Buster Douglas walks away from Mike Tyson as the new heavyweight champion of the world, upping his record to 34-1. and A 10th round knockout, not a TKO, but a knockout of what looked to be an indestructible Mike Tyson, and Buster Douglas is the new heavyweight champ. This fight was so heavily weighted in Tyson's favor that the odds makers in Las Vegas wouldn't even put up a betting line. Tyson's record falls to 37-1. and Our Eric Clemens was at the Tokyo Dome to view this fight, and he had a chance after the fight to talk with the new heavyweight champion of the world. I knew if I did what I, if I stayed, stayed so focused and wouldn't get frustrated, you know, that I would become heavyweight champion. Can you see him getting discouraged? Was he getting discouraged? Uh, Frustrated. I think I think that uh, I was hurting early, but you know he's a strong man. And he's going to take a lot of shots. Champ, you got like ch chopping at the tree, you, and then you're going to eventually chop that tree down. You got knocked down, and you were really cussing to yourself. You were yeah. upset yeah. that you got knocked down. Because I started getting really relaxed when I got knocked down. Yeah. I was lax, and it kind of caught me off balance because I wasn't really hurt, you know, uh, a lot of emotions, you know. Uh, what are you thinking about right now? How, what do you feel right now this very moment? I feel... Where's the law? How many did you... I feel relieved. Coming and I feel in. satisfied. You did it for your mother? I did it for my mother. I did it for my team. I did it for my... John Johnson, J.D. McCauley, John Russell, my son, you know. My dad, my dad, my dad. <laughs> Woo, that's good. That's good. My dad, man, I really feel good, man. I Ever any good. doubt, Buster? I mean, you just dictated. He no. never got into the no, fight. No, no. I seen doubt. I seen doubt of Mike Tyson as a win. You know, I, I, I've been watching Mike for about. You know, I've been on undercard for four times, man, four or five times. And I've always watched how he looks at other opponents. And he, he just knew it. Like John said, that they're going to know before the fight starts that they're in for a fight. He said if you Stop fought it technically, you, you, you could it. do it. Okay. You did it. You did it. Had a fan. I was a wrestling fan. I'm, I'm a big fan. How long has it been, champ, since you <laughs> thought <laughs> that you, you really you could beat Mike? You fought on the undercard with Mike well, a few times. Well, how long has it been that you've been confident? I've always, I've always thought I could beat him. I, mean, I always thought I had the, what, the tools to beat. You know, it was just a matter of getting in there and exploiting them and, and staying focused. And that's what I did tonight. I had the opportunity and I took well and great advantage of it. And I think that Jesus Christ will give me more strength. Congratulations, man. Now, it must be pointed out, at the point this fight was stopped in the 10th round, of the three judges, the U.S. judge had Douglas well ahead on his card. One Japanese judge had Tyson actually with a narrow lead. Another judge had it a tie, so had it gone the full 12 rounds, there might have been some controversy. As it is, Don King, the fight promoter, has filed a formal protest claiming that the uh, knockdown of Buster Douglas in the eighth round by Tyson, Douglas uh, benefited, according to King, of uh, a long count, a too long 10 count, However, uh, that protest, uh, we'll have to wait and see if it will be honored. Buster Douglas with the greatest upset in heavyweight championship fighting history. Now, after the fighter, Eric Clemens also had a chance to chat with maybe the second biggest loser on the card, Evander Holyfield, who came to the fight in Tokyo with a guaranteed multi-million dollar payday against Tyson in his pocket if Tyson had won. How did Holyfield feel about the result? All right, we're back at the Tokyo Dome with the number one heavyweight contender, Evander Holyfield, on hand to look at what many thought would be a Mike Tyson victory. Instead, of course, it turned into one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight history. First of all, Evander, let me ask you, are you surprised by the outcome? Well, not really surprised. I, I came into this fight with an open mind that I was going to fight uh, the winner of the match because my goal is to be the heavyweight champion of the world, not just to fight Mike Tyson, even though, you know, the money was dependent on Mike Tyson. How do you, what do you think is the main reason? What do you think is the main reasons for Buster Douglas pulling this upset off? He kept Mike Tyson at bay pretty much from the start to the finish of this fight. Well, well James Buster Douglas came in to win. And when uh, an individual make up in his mind that he came to win, it's going to be a good fight. He had the skills that necessary and had the desire. And that was one to fight for him. Of course, you guys don't put your minds on losing very much. If you're the champion right now, you've just lost. What goes through a guy's mind when you've, when you've lost a fight like this in your opinion? Well, uh, well, in my opinion, I think you have to go back and regroup, and you, you look at your films, and, and you try to put your state of mind, how you were feeling in the fight, 
did you get off first or did the other guy dictate the pace? And usually when you, use the, uh, when you lose the fight, uh, you don't fight your fight. And, and the fact is, Bubba Douglas fought his fight this time. Mike Tyson didn't fight his fight. Buster seemed to exploit what weaknesses Tyson had, and weakness in Tyson is, is a strange term there because most people thought he had none. Did you know of these weaknesses in Mike Tyson all along that were exploited tonight? Well, everybody have a weakness, and the weakness is not fighting your fight. And Mike Tyson didn't fight his fight, Buster Douglas fought his fight, because it's almost impossible two fighters to fight, they fight when they're in the ring, and especially when one man is tall, one man is short. All right, you expect to get the shot next at Buster Douglas for the championship. Uh, would it bother you a lot if Buster Douglas gave Mike Tyson a rematch before, before June, the, the scheduled date of the, uh, your fight with Mike Tyson, supposedly coming off in Atlantic City? Oh, yes, it will, yes. I've been waiting in line for a long time. I've been very patient, and I'm the number one contender. And Tyson had his chance, and he, and he lost. And I feel that it's only right for me to get my opportunity. One of the veteran ringside observers was Michael Marley, boxing writer for the New York Post. Our Eric Clemens, a very busy man in Tokyo, understandably cornered Michael Marley to get his opinions of the huge upset in Tokyo. All right, from the Tokyo Dome, joining me, Michael Marley, New York Post. Michael, the biggest heavyweight championship upset in history. Where does this leave heavyweight boxing right now? James Buster Douglas over Mike Tyson. I think you asked me that question on Saturday, the day before the fight, in an amazing, shocking upset. I think the biggest heavyweight upset since a young man named Cassius Clay beat Sonny Liston in 1964. He, Liston was an 8-1 to one favorite. This fight was seen as such a joke that Douglas wasn't even on the board. But, you know, I think it's the best thing to happen to the heavyweight division because now it'll be perceived, instead of a constant Tyson wipeout, as totally competitive. I mean, commercially, it's the best thing for everybody, including Mike Tyson. And I think Mike Tyson is still going to prove himself a great champion. The sign of great champions is to come back after a defeat. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard's here. He's thinking about Montreal. Muhammad Ali lost. Joe Lewis lost. Uh, I think in a rematch, you'll see like a second Lewis Schmeling fight, you'll see Mike Tyson knock Buster Douglas out really quickly. But as for tonight, if I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. And I think I'm going to have to go to the videotape. Why did Buster win? Did the reach advantage, the height advantage, more determined than Mike Tyson? Well, well, you know, whatever was wrong with Mike Tyson, he didn't appear to be right from the beginning. But I thought it was a very close fight up until the end. I had it uh, dead even. You know, I don't know if that count was long. Uh, Don King has lodged a protest. And uh, he compared it to the Dempsey Tunney fight. If it is over 10 seconds, then Tyson should have won by knockout. But be that as it may, give Buster Douglas, Douglas all the credit in the world. He did what Larry Holmes, uh, Tubbs, uh, Tucker, Bone Crusher, all these big, tall, strong guys, what they said they would do, Buster Douglas didn't. He stayed in close range. He fired lead right hands. He tied him up. He outstrengthed him. And you know, there's no knocking Buster Douglas. He did exactly what no one in the world, except for Mr. Buster Douglas believed he's, he could do, and it's an incredible upset. Final question. The future of the heavyweight division now, what does this set up? Douglas Holyfield for the championship in Atlantic City now? I, I think we're liable to see an immediate rematch between uh, Buster Douglas. He'll get a chance to prove that this wasn't a fluke. Mike Tyson will get a chance to prove that he is a great champion, and uh, you know, the winner of that fight has to fight the number one man, Evander Holyfield. All right, Michael, thank you very much for being with us. Michael Marley of the New York Post again, the biggest heavyweight championship upset in boxing history. James Buster Douglas, a 10th round knockout of the undisputed and unbeaten heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. I'm Eric Clemens. Let's go back to Sports Center. Okay, Eric, thank you very much for your work from Tokyo. So 29-year-old James Buster Douglas from Columbus, Ohio, overcomes adversity. I'll say he did. The adversity of his mother passing away last month, the adversity of uh, separation between he and his wife, and the adversity of the mother of his 11-year-old child now fighting for her life with a life-threatening disease. James Buster Douglas, nobody said he could do it. He's the only one who thought he could, and he did. Buster Douglas, the new heavyweight champion of the world. Now to college hoops. Well, a great advantage of that. Tyson skipped the post-fight news conference, but Buster was there. He said Tyson was pretty easy to hit. I knew Mike was always easy to hit. It, it was just because he comes straight in, and when somebody decided to throw a punch, they were hitting. The fight was great, and... It's party time. <laughs> it's party time in Miami. The NBA is in its all-star break. The game is tomorrow. Tonight was the traditional pre-game festival. And exploiting them and, and staying focused. And that's what I did tonight.
Hello again and welcome to Sports Weekend, everybody. And in the history of sports, and perhaps for all time to come, tonight's upset by Buster Douglas of heavyweight champ Mike Tyson will go down. If not as the greatest upset of all time, then certainly it has to be in the top two. And what the other one would be, I wouldn't be able to tell you right now. It happened in Tokyo. And from the very outset, Douglas established the tempo of the fight. He used his superior reach to keep the champion at bay. And when Tyson did get inside, Douglas won those exchanges too. He was in total command of this fight until the latter stages of the eighth round. That is when Tyson landed a vicious uppercut and Douglas went down like a bowling pin. And at this point of the fight, you say to yourself, okay, this is more like it. Douglas barely beat the count and was then promptly saved by the bell. But he came back strong in the ninth round. And then in the tenth, Buster was on the attack again. He landed a solid right uppercut, followed up with a left-right combination, and then landed a solid left that sent Tyson to a place that Iron Mike is used to sending his opponents to, KO land. A stunning upset, James Buster Douglas, a 10th round knockout of Mike Tyson to win the title. If I stayed, stayed in tough focus and wouldn't get frustrated, you know, that I would become heavyweight champion. Can you see I've it? always thought I could beat him. I, mean, I always thought I had the, what, the tools to beat, you know. It was just a matter of getting in there and exploiting him and, and staying focused. And that's what I did tonight. He also turned out the lights on a man who was thought of as unbeatable. Well, Mike Tyson, turns out, is only human after all, and he refused to be interviewed afterward. It's his first loss after 37 straight pro wins, and you got to wonder what Evander Holyfield must be thinking right now. Evander, of course, was counting on a Tyson win to set up a mega bucks fight with the champion. We'll move on now. The NBA gearing up for its all-star. And in 1965, there was an unknown heavyweight contender by the name of Cassius Clay. A 7-1 to underdog to the champion, Sonny Liston. The two fought. Cassius Clay won. 25 years later, there is a new Clay. His name is James Buster Douglas. Douglas knocked the reigning king, Mike Tyson, off his throne. Tyson, the unbeatable, the invincible, is now the former champ. Tyson, who came into the fight in Tokyo as the undisputed heavyweight champion at 37-0, had been in turmoil. He had fired his longtime trainer, and many wondered if he was working as hard as in the past. Douglas had problems as well. His mother died recently. But somehow, this guy named Buster busted up the champ. By most people's account, Douglas in the white trunks led through the first half of the fight. He closed Tyson's left eye as he peppered him with both hands. Tyson, in need of a quick pickup, nearly got it in the eighth round. He decked Douglas near the end of the round with a right uppercut. Douglas got to his feet at the count of nine and then was saved by the bell. But nothing would save Tyson in the tenth. A right uppercut to the chin and then a straight left that finished him off. Tyson was counted out at one minute, 23 seconds of the tenth round. Buster Douglas becomes the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world with what could be the biggest upset in the history of boxing. Around the globe, surprising as it may sound, there's little doubt, Buster Douglas will be regarded as the new heavyweight champion of the world after his shocking victory over Mike Tyson last night, a 10th round knockout. And we'll go back to uh, review the from last night. This is in the eighth round where Douglas, who had been dominating throughout, is suddenly floored by the uppercut from Tyson. And this is where the Tyson people contend a long count took place. And in fact, there was an overlap of about three seconds, but Douglas clearly could have gotten up at any point that he wanted. There you see the Tyson camp, and they're continuing their count, saying 12, 13, and they claim that they were robbed. And we'll continue the discussion of that later in the day. Right now, let's... The, um, the left side of my face was swollen up, and I couldn't see the punches that well, and it was able for him to connect. As for Douglas, he was unavailable for comment after the ruling, but as of now, he holds on to the IBF title. In sunny Miami this afternoon... <laughs> His left-right combination packs the power to put people on the campus. That makes it for the world title. Michael Carvajal battles Tony. Sports world concerning the heavyweight fight that took place in Tokyo Saturday night. No, you didn't dream that that man, Mike Tyson, was knocked out by James Buster Douglas. However, even though that happened, Douglas is hardly the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Both the WBC and the WBA are refusing to recognize Douglas as the new champ after the referee admitted to giving Douglas a long count when he was knocked down by Tyson in the eighth round. In a review of the video at Tyson's post-fight press conference, it appears that the referee started his count three seconds after the official timekeeper did, giving the challenger, Douglas, extra time to rise. Like I said, I just want fair play. I thought 
legitimately that he was out. Your guys know, knew me for years. I never cried or bitched about anything. Forgive my French. But you know what I mean? I, I, um, I, I walk it like I talk it. You know what I mean? I'm just asking for a fair chance. You know what I mean? I don't mind. I, I lost before. Nothing's wrong with losing. I can handle a loss if I want to lose fairly. The announcements by the WBA and WBC came seven hours after it was believed that Douglas won the fight in the 10th round. Both boxing groups are scheduled to meet in executive session in the next seven to 10 days to make an official ruling. The IBF is recognizing that James Buster Douglas is indeed the new heavyweight champion of the world. If you are one of the many who... Mike had to be helped out of the ring to his dressing room and Buster Douglas of Columbus, Ohio, was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Or was he? Immediately after the fight at a press conference, the heads of the WBA and WBC said they were withholding recognition of the fight because the referee had improperly picked up the count from the official timekeeper and Douglas had 14 seconds to get up instead of only nine. So the biggest upset in heavyweight boxing history became perhaps the biggest controversy in history. According to the WBA and WBC, Mike Tyson is still the heavyweight champion of the world, pending the outcome of meetings of their executive councils later this month. Both fighters reacted to the outcome of the fight, beginning with the ex-champion, who was asked whether he still regarded himself as the heavyweight champion of the world. Absolutely, yes. But I still want to fight him again. You know what I mean? I never, your guys know, knew me for years. I never cried or bitched about anything. Forgive my friend. But you know what I mean? I, I, um, I, I walk it like I talk it. You know what I mean? I'm just asking for a fair chance. You know what I mean? I don't mind. I, I lost before. Nothing's wrong with losing. I can handle a loss if I want to lose fairly. You know what I mean? Any, you know what I mean? The easiest part about all this is winning. You know what I mean? The hardest part is about is losing, coming back from losing. You know, everyone loses. We lose in life. We lose people that we love. But you know what I mean? The, the, the toughest guys are the ones that come back. Win it and then to come up with some cornball stuff about, you know, being knocked down first uh, was just unbelievable. I mean, you know, if he was a real true champion, he would just face facts that he got whooped and, and go on, you know. Uh, but to, you know, try to say that, well, I knocked him down first, I should be the champion is, is, is ludicrous. In my opinion, the actions of the WBA and the WBC are absurd. The referee's count is official. Buster Douglas clearly could have gotten up earlier, and most importantly, the round was over. Mike Tyson was not denied an opportunity to finish off Buster Douglas in that round. The sum total of the referee's action was Buster Douglas had a several seconds extra to recover. That may be enough to order a rematch. That definitely is not enough to deny Buster Douglas the fruits of his magnificent performance. We'll be back with more halftime after this. ABC's College Basketball Halftime Report has been brought to you by LA Sports at this hour are the disputed heavyweight championship fight and the pending baseball lockout. We'll update you on both in the next few minutes. We'll hear from Mike Tyson's former trainer, the very outspoken Kevin Rooney. Buster Douglas's father, Bill, a former fighter himself, will join us, as will NBC boxing analyst Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. And here in the studio, we'll talk live with baseball commissioner, Mr. Faison. Maybe not disputed by sane people, but disputed by some who'll have an interest in it between Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson. And we'll do that after these messages from your local stations. Most of you know by now, here's what happened last night in Tokyo. Actually, it was uh, afternoon Japan time, late last night here on the East Coast. James Buster Douglas, given virtually no chance to even make the fight competitive against Mike Tyson, dominated throughout. But in the eighth round, with Tyson being pummeled by Douglas and Mike back to the ropes, he connected with a vicious right uppercut, which sent Douglas to the canvas. Now, it appeared to almost everyone that Douglas could have gotten up at any point after midway through the count. However, everyone concedes that the count was slow. There appeared to be an overlap of about three seconds between the official timekeeper and the referee's count. Douglas got to his feet somewhere between the count of eight and nine. Then the bell sounded, ending the eighth round. Eventually, Douglas resumed his control of the fight, and in the tenth round, a four-punch combination knocked Mike Tyson out. Now, for what it's worth, we put the stopwatch watching the HBO tape a while ago on both knockdowns, and it was consistent in this sense. The knockdown count was about three seconds behind both times. The referee was also three seconds behind the timekeeper when Tyson went down. When the referee counted 10 on Tyson, he had been on the floor somewhere between 13.5 
and 14 seconds by our count. But then again, the Douglas people don't have any reason to complain. They were the winners on the knockout in the 10th round. But immediately afterwards, Mike Tyson's people were complaining that they had been victimized by a long count. This is Tyson on the floor. You see the mouthpiece off to his right shoulder, and he's finished at this point. But back in the eighth round, when it was Douglas who was on the floor, the Tyson people contended that it was the long count, uh, something reminiscent of Dempsey Tunney back in the 20s. There you see Douglas going down. And so the WBC and the WBA, two of the governing bodies in the alphabet soup world of professional boxing, are saying that they are suspending judgment on this. They're going to conduct a review. Right now, the fight's outcome is in limbo as far as they're concerned. And there's apparently a strong possibility, despite all logic and despite the public opinion, which will be solidly against it, that they will uh, declare this a no contest. And Mike Tyson will officially remain, in the view of the WBC and the WBA, the heavyweight champion of the world, even though the IBF, the other organization, says that they now recognize James Douglas. In any case, it's pretty clear that Mike Tyson did not fight the kind of fight people expected him to last night. And a while ago, I asked Kevin Rooney, the former trainer for Mike Tyson, who still hopes to train him sometime again, for his reaction to last night's outcome. Here's Kevin Rooney. Well, you know, Mike is, acted like he didn't want to fight, he didn't want to be there, and that's, and that's the way he fought. You know, and he allowed uh, Buster Douglas to get brave. As, as the rounds went by, you know, Douglas said, this guy doesn't want to fight. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight, and that's what he did. If you could have suddenly materialized in his corner midway through this fight, in the fourth or fifth round, what would you have whispered in Mike Tyson's ear? I, I wouldn't have been whispering. I would have been yelling. I would have been telling him, you, "Do you want to fight, or should I throw the towel in now?" You know, I'm not. I don't like when you smack fighters around, but I may, you know, tap him a little bit and maybe smack him hard. He wasn't fighting. He was letting that, letting Buster control everything. He threw no combination. Whenever they got close, something that I had been working on for a long time, I would have told him punch out, throw combinations. He didn't do any of that. He, he, he wanted to lose. Maybe the pressure is getting to him, and, and I don't doubt that. To have all these people talking in your ear, you know, and saying different things, and Don King uh, is a great comment, and he controls everything, and he let the fighter think he controlled it himself, but he really didn't. And, and Mike is not a dumb guy, and I think deep down he knew that. And that's part of the problem why he stepped in a ring in Japan and he said, ah, you know what, I don't want to fight. Now, when you say he didn't want to fight, like he almost won or lose, let's say in fairness, he summoned up whatever it took to deliver that uppercut in the eighth round, and he didn't go down from the first love tap from Douglas. I mean, Douglas dominated the fight, and Tyson took some terrific shots back to the ropes and showed some heart to stay on his feet, don't you think? Oh, definitely. Mike is a very good fighter. Yeah, he has hard... I mean, that answers the question, can Mike Tyson take a punch? Because Douglas hit him more in that fight than he had ever been hit from his amateur career, through his pro career, including all the sparring in between. He got hit so much, I mean, it hurt to watch that. You've been very critical of Don King and his influence on Mike Tyson. What form do you think that influence has taken, and how has it hurt Tyson? Well, it's hurt him. He just, you know, he blew any chance to uh, break Rocky Marciano's record. But more importantly than that, didn't you see Don King in the background? Mike went to the dressing room with a beating, and there was Don King looking for a spot to try to get next to Douglas. See, I've, I've, my room is telling me that he has uh, five options on, on Douglas, and, and it's just a joke. You know, he's ruined a great young career. A young career now on the upsurge, obviously, is that of James Douglas. His father, Bill Douglas, was once a ranked middleweight contender, and at one time, he trained his son. He watched the fight on HBO back in Columbus, Ohio, and then he joined us a couple of hours ago and gave us this reaction to the fact that his son is the heavyweight champion. It was uh, very exciting. I was very satisfied with uh, James Douglas doing what he uh, had to do. He knew what he had to do, and the main thing was hit this. Everyone asked me about the fight, and I told him the main thing he got to do is hit this guy because he hasn't been hit and then he'll maybe clock out or something like that, and then he can take it and win this championship. I assume he's called you from Tokyo. What did he say to you? Yes, yes, he called me there and said he's ready to come home, and uh, I said, well, you did it. He said, yeah, we did it, and uh, he just main thing he's ready to do is come back. He know what he went to do, and he come to do it. He said he want to get out there and see the Japanese, have a good kashirashi, whatever, and go on and go <laughs> <pull> back home. <laughs> James, du James Douglas is one of the most outstanding I can't say no. I don't know.
Bill Douglas, whose son is today the heavyweight champion of the world, at least according to everybody who watched it, except the WBC, the WBA, and people who have a vested interest in the Mike Tyson camp. Our fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, was outraged by the move to overturn last night's result. We talked to him at length about that earlier in the day. There was one point we didn't cover, and that is, where is Evander Holyfield now? He was in line for the next shot at Tyson and logically would get the next shot at Douglas, but that's in limbo. And we asked Ferdy for his opinion on Evander Holyfield's next move. He is in a unique position. He is the number one ranked challenger in a mandated title position. In other words, the next guy that fights for the title has got to be Holyfield according to their rules and regulations, unless they suspend the decision, unless they vacate the title. They got so many alleys to go down into that they have to go back to Mexico City and spend a week trying to figure out what can best benefit Don King, Tyson, then Douglas, then way at the end, Evander Holyfield. One thing is for certain, they got to research and try to find in every nook and cranny of Mexico City a little tiny bit of conscience and maybe some good faith and morals and try to come up with the idea that a man named Douglas won the heavyweight championship of the world by knocking out Iron Mike Tyson, and of that, there was no doubt. All right, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Interesting to note that a few days ago, there was a story where Don King was seriously considering some kind of exhibition match between Mike Tyson and Hulk Hogan. It seems even more appropriate now as these latest maneuverings seem to be something out of the World Wrestling Federation rather than the realm of legitimate sports. We come back after these messages from your local station. Um, because uh, I, I couldn't see it happening. I thought, that, I thought they made a mistake. They said that um, Mike Tyson knocked Bruno out. Uh, but it was the other way around. Bruno knocked Mike Tyson out. Are you surprised that there's a controversy in boxing? Um, I'm not surprised of that because I've been through a lot of different controversies and um, I've seen it happen. So uh, it could happen. It's possible that it did happen. Thomas Hearns, a hitman. He looks good, doesn't he, Dick? Back to you guys. Looks great and sounds great, Pat. <laughs> Coming up next on Sports Center, Buster Douglas did indeed shock the world, but is he really the champ? East Side. We continue to follow the major sports story of the weekend, that of course, Buster Douglas's amazing knockout of Mike Tyson last night in Tokyo. And Buster proved what he could do inside the ring, Tom, and now he's getting a real education outside. Not only that, he may be getting the shaft outside the yeah. ring. Winner and new undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster Douglas, right? Maybe, maybe not. Yes, remember, we're talking about the wonderful world of boxing here. The sweet science, as it is called, had never seen a bigger upset in the heavyweight division than last night's demolition of Mike Tyson by the off-the-board underdog, Buster Douglas. But leave it to the powers that run this sport to leave the new champ in limbo just when he should be enjoying the fruits of his labors. Eric Clemens reports from Tokyo. It was to be a typical Tyson demolition, but it turned into a nightmare here at the Tokyo Dome. James Buster Douglas used his 12-inch reach advantage and one-two combinations to land more hard punches against Iron Mike than anyone had in 37 previous bouts. Douglas was apparently the new champion after scoring a 10th round knockout, but did the fight last too long? Tyson's will appeared to have saved him at 256 of round eight when two uppercuts put Douglas on the canvas. Referee Octavio Mehran Sanchez ignored the official timekeeper who was three seconds ahead of him on the count. Douglas got to his feet, appearing unhurt by the referee's count of nine. But Tyson's corner protested following the loss, saying that the official count on the knockdown was 12 to 13 seconds. The WBA and WBC agreed with holding recognition of a champion until further review by committee. We reviewed all the facts, and we had to have a special meeting with our executive committee people, also the championship committee members, in order to make a final decision that we had to discuss also with the people of the WBC in order to make a jointly decision. We are supervisors of title fights that our organization recognizes or not. It is our obligation to fight for justice. It is our obligation to let the people present the case, review it in accordance to the belief of the people that from the WBC make a decision. Suleiman later insisted that a rematch was mandatory. Tyson, meanwhile, insisted he hadn't lost as a result of taking Douglas too lightly. He feels that anything short of a chance to regain the titles would be improper. I still want to fight him again. 
You know what I mean? I never, your guys know, knew me for years. I never cried or bitched about anything. Forgive my friends. But you know what I mean? I, I, um, I, I walk it like I talk it. You know what I mean? I'm just asking for a fair chance. You know what I mean? I don't mind. I, I lost before. Nothing's wrong with losing. I can handle a loss, but I want to lose fairly. Everybody has seen the facts, and the facts are irrefutable and incontrovertible. Douglas was in the middle of a victory celebration with family and friends at the time of the joint news conference. The feelings from his camp were made crystal clear. Could you, in your mind, have gotten up earlier? Right. I wasn't, I wasn't, and this is honestly, I wasn't hurt. It was basically, you know, like being knocked down off balance. You know, it was just a shot that I didn't see, and the momentum of it made me go back. You know, it was late in the fight, but I was not, I wasn't hurt because I immediately, you know, my reaction was like, damn, you know, and I caught the, caught the count, you know. And when he said six and seven, eight, I got up. You know, I was out at the seven, I got up at eight. You know, and then, you know, was ready to continue in the bell run. We won that fight. There's no question about it. We knew we was going to be, when we left coming out here, we knew we was going to win this fight. Did nobody believe us, but we believed it, and we won it. It's a disgrace what they're doing. Uh, it's a total disgrace. But that just shows the, the, the lack of character and, and uh, uh, respect for the game and everything else, the, the, the people that are they're doing this. It's, you know. The press contingent debated the issues at hand, most falling on the side of Buster Douglas, feeling the matter had been settled in the way it was meant to be, with the gloves. Yeah, do you, you think Douglas should have been uh, declared the winner? Uh... Douglas was the winner. Mm -hmm. He knocked the guy out. He, he whipped his butt. He beat him really bad. The surprise result cost Evander Holyfield millions. He was the next in line for a big payday against Tyson. His camp hopes the indecision of the WBA and WBC won't cost him a well-earned title shot. We, we believe that our guy, Evander, was going to be the first guy to knock Mike Tyson out. And now Buster Douglas upset the apple cart, which, you know, he fought a great fight. And now, all of a sudden, they're playing with the decision, so we don't know what's going to happen. All we want is Evander to get his shot. He's earned it. He's beaten five contenders in a row. He's been number one contender for a year. We just want him to get his shot. We want to fight Evander Holyfield and then fight Mike Tyson again. But I'll tell you what, they can forget it. They can forget it. They can go anywhere they want to go. I mean, who wants to pay to see Mike Mike Tyson now, especially because of this stuff. If he would have been a man, if Don King and them would have been a man and said, hey, he got beat, uh, you know, let's work out something so that they can fight again, then fine, you know, but they're taking that attitude, so to hell with them, you know. Just hours after what many considered a great moment for boxing with the heavyweight championship changing hands and the biggest upset in the division's history has now become yet another black eye for the sport. Three young men want to be treated fairly and equally. And now it appears at least one of them will be left out in the cold. Reporting from Tokyo, Eric Clemens, ESPN. Make no mistake, Buster Douglas beat up Mike Tyson badly. And Tyson's former trainer, Kevin Rooney, said that he knew early on that Mike Tyson was not the same old Mike Tyson. He wasn't prepared to fight, so um, anyone would have confused him. Because, see, Mike is supposed to be aggressive, using his jab, moving his head, stepping to the side, things that them guys don't know how to teach him. I mean, you know, Jay Bright was around, Cousin was around me. He's not a trainer. He's an actor. And he knows how to, he can look at a fight and say, well, the guy's not doing this and doing that. To do that and, and or to be able to train a fight is two different things. Now, later on in this edition of Sports Center, ESPN's Charlie Steiner and Al Bernstein will have more on this heavyweight mess in the world of boxing. Bill. Now from the chaos. Eric Clemens told us earlier in the show that Tyson Douglas fight featured more than just a shocking uh, outcome. Yeah, more than a few questions left to be answered. For instance, did the referee give Douglas more than 10 seconds to get up after Tyson decked him at the end of round eight? Mm. Charlie Steiner and Al Bernstein join us now to discuss that subject and more. All right, thanks, guys. So really, the question now, Bernstein, is this. Was it a matter of a long count or a slow count by referee Octavio Meron? Well, in my opinion, it was a matter of a slow count. I think what really happened is the referee picked up the count maybe a beat after the timekeeper did. But, Charlie, what he did was he simply counted slowly. Uh, and so, as a result, he wasn't in sync with the timekeeper. Here in the United States, you notice, and really all over the world, they're supposed to do it. You're supposed to take a look at the timekeeper if you're the referee and count in sync with that timekeeper and in America normally you see them with a big gavel pounding the mat so that the referee knows and can look at him. Octavio Miran did not do that in this case and so what happened was it was about a 12 and a half second count for Buster Douglas but when you put a watch to that and then put a watch to the count of Mike Tyson that also was a 12 and a half second count. 
So what happened is Octavio Miran Sanchez counted very slowly. That's where he made his mistake. He did not make his mistake, as he later would admit or uh, say he would admit to, that he picked up the count too late. That was not his mistake. Now, as far as Buster Douglas is concerned, his one and only responsibility when he's knocked on the seat of his pants is to keep his eye focused on the referee and listen to his count. And that's precisely what he did. Yeah, that is his only responsibility, and it's what he's supposed to do. That's what his corner is supposed to do. And he was looking at uh, Octavio Miran, and I'm inclined to believe Buster Douglas when he says that he could have gotten up a little bit earlier. He didn't, it wasn't a matter of him just barely beating the count. He was using that count to get a little bit more rest. And as long as he's looking at that referee, and that referee's saying six, seven, eight, he, he's okay. He can stay down. And uh, I think the Buster Douglas did the right thing, and I don't think he should be penalized because the referee counted slowly. That's the referee interpretation. Unfortunately, the controversy surrounding the long count or slow count overshadowed a magnificent performance by this 29-year-old journeyman from Columbus. A performance in which Douglas, in many ways, took a page from Mike Tyson. Uh, he used many of the same tactics that Tyson has used. Not only did Douglas use his long reach, his jab, his uppercut, all the conventional tools, pushing Tyson off, the things that we know you have to do to beat Mike Tyson, he used some of the illegal tactics that Tyson is known for, hitting after the bell occasionally, hitting after breaks, using elbows, using his head, using roughhouse tactics. Illegal, but nevertheless, very effective against Tyson, and using just enough of them so Tyson couldn't use them himself. So now what about the question of invincibility, which has been one of Mike Tyson's strongest weapons? He's not so invincible, obviously, anymore. No, he's not. And uh, I would say that the, the thing about that invincibility is that Mike Tyson is a real history of a uh, historian in terms of boxing history, and he knows that people lose. He's looked at his heroes of the past, the Ali's, the Joe Lewis's, knows they lost and came back from that adversity. That's the one thing they have to say could make Mike Tyson come back and come back strong. He understands that fighters can lose and still come back. Over the next week to 10 days, the WBC and the WBA are going to have executive board meetings, mm -hmm. exactly what they are. We're not entirely <laughs> sure. Who knows? What do you see as a scenario being played out here? Well, the IBF has already started to kind of indicate its position, which is that it's saying until Mike Tyson files any kind of a protest, they're not going to do anything, which is an indication that they might be standing behind the ultimate decision of the Buster Douglas' champion. WBA and WBC, uh, with, I'd say, more than a subtle influence from Don King, who has a, a big interest in keeping Tyson as champion, they seem to be indicating that they'd be more inclined to overturn this. I think that they're going to have a very difficult time when people start looking at these tapes over and over again, they're going to have a tough time selling this to the public, to anybody who's a boxing fan. And already I feel the sentiment uh, and public opinion mobilizing behind the idea that, hey, Buster Douglas did it. Don't discredit his performance by looking for loopholes in the contract, so to speak. He won the heavyweight championship in the ring by beating a supposedly invincible Mike Tyson, given the title. Boxing's biggest upset has also turned out to be one of boxing's biggest controversies ever. Now let's get back to Sports Center. All right, fellas, thanks a lot. And Bill, from East Orange, New Jersey today, the uh, international headquarters of, of the International Boxing Federation, their president, Robert W. Lee, says, and I quote, we can't penalize a fighter for following the directions of the referee. Therefore, Buster Douglas, who won the title in the ring, should be recognized by all persons as world heavyweight champion. I think Mr. Lee speaks for the uh, court of public opinion. Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson to a pulp. No matter what the WBA, WBC do, he's the champ. Well, I mean, uh, and really, that should be the stance of the WBA and the WBC as well, but of sure. course, that's not the way things work in boxing. No. We know no. that. We'll take a time out right now, and when we come back, it is back to college hoops. Uh, yes, opens up a new era in boxing. Just 20,000 of the 20 million victims of Stalin's Holocaust three times as big as... We just had the good one, though. We have to just get kids to stay in school. Yes, they can accomplish so much more. It's just a matter of getting to learn that. We can't say that enough. No, and half the time they don't listen. We've got one person that's trying. Well, some do. You some, never know. Some do. Yeah. Uh, the NBA All-Star Game today found a bit of mess. Douglas, the WBA and WBC may not recognize the new champ. It stinks, folks. That and more follows. Basketball. The big story of the day is the dispute over last night's heavyweight championship in Tokyo in which James Buster Douglas pulled off a huge upset over Mike Tyson. 
Today, Tyson and his camp showed the media in Tokyo that Douglas was down longer than 10 seconds when Tyson knocked him down in the eighth round. The referee admitted that his count was wrong, that he started it later than the ringside timekeeper, which happens all the time. The fact remains that Douglas got up before the ref counted 10, and that's the only count you can expect Douglas to keep track of. Because of the referee's admission, the WBA and WBC have vacated the title, while Douglas still has his IBF belt. Do you regard yourself as heavyweight champion in the world right now? Absolutely, yes. But I still want to fight him again. You know what I mean? I never, your guys know, knew me for years. I never cried or bitched about anything. Forgive my friend. You know what I mean? I, I, um, I, I walk it like I talk it. You know what I mean? I'm just asking for a fair chance. You know what I mean? I don't mind. I, I lost before. Nothing's wrong with losing. I can handle a loss. But I want to lose fairly. This is garbage and shows the control Don King apparently has on boxing. Very clearly, Tyson took Buster Douglas too lightly and didn't train the way he should. The former champ simply was not prepared. When Tyson floored Douglas in the eighth round, the challenger was not hurt and just took advantage of the referee's count to rest as most fighters do. But when he put Tyson out in the tenth round, there was no doubt. Douglas deserves the three titles he clearly won, though Tyson does deserve a rematch. The IBF is the only one of the three to show a little class, something that's badly needed in the fight game today. Let's get back to basketball of the college. Championship fight in Tokyo Sunday. But only the International Boxing Federation is recognizing Douglas as the champ. Both the World Boxing Council and the World Boxing Association are investigating a protest from promoter Don King. King says that Douglas received a long count when Tyson sent him to the canvas in round eight. The final decisions from the WBA and WBC are expected in a week to 10 days. 34-year-old Honolulu denied the heavyweight title despite his victory over Mike Tyson. Half man, half machine, Robocop. On Sports Center, Saturday night they played Beat the Clock. Now with the real heavyweight champ of the world, please stand up. Everybody has seen the facts, and the facts are irrefutable and incontrovertible. It's a disgrace what they're doing. Uh, it's a total disgrace. In Miami. Welcome to the extended edition of Sports Center. I'm Dan Patrick, along with Bob Lee. Saturday night, Buster Douglas. Well, he knocked out Mike Tyson. They should have labeled that a technical knockout. I guess if you look at all the technical difficulties surrounding it. And the politics, too. But really, when you look at the event, which is not yet final, but more than the 69 Mets, or Villanova beating Georgetown. This was Truman over Dewey. The Berlin Wall coming down. Mike Tyson, the very image of robotic savagery, proven all too mortal. His knockout at the fist of James Buster Douglas is arguably the greatest ever in the history of sports. The greatest upset, what was not an upset in this sport, was the immediate attempt to rewrite history and undo Tyson's defeat. Eric Clemens was ringside. It was to be a typical Tyson demolition, but it turned into a nightmare here at the Tokyo Dome. James Buster Douglas used his 12-inch reach advantage and one-two combinations to land more hard punches against Iron Mike than anyone had in 37 previous bouts. Douglas was apparently the new champion after scoring a 10th round knockout. But did the fight last too long? Tyson's will appeared to have saved him at 2.56 of round 8 when two uppercuts put Douglas on the canvas. Referee Octavio Meron Sanchez ignored the official timekeeper who was three seconds ahead of him on the count. Douglas got to his feet appearing unhurt by the referee's count of nine. But Tyson's corner protested following the loss saying that the official count on the knockdown was 12 to 13 seconds. The WBA and WBC agreed with holding recognition of a champion until further review by committee. We reviewed all the facts, and we had to have a special meeting with our executive committee people, also the championship committee members, in order to make a final decision that we had to discuss also with the people of the WBC in order to make a jointly decision. We are supervisors of title fights that our organization recognizes or not. It is our obligation to fight for justice. It is our obligation to let the people present the case, review it, in accordance to the belief of the people that from the Dolo BC make a decision. Suleiman later insisted that a rematch was mandatory. Tyson, meanwhile, insisted he hadn't lost as a result of taking Douglas too lightly. He feels that anything short of a chance to regain the titles would be improper. I still want to fight him again. 
You know what I mean? I ain't never, your guys know, knew me for years. I never cried or bitched about anything. Forgive my friend. But you know what I mean? I, I, um, I, I walk it like I talk it. You know what I mean? I'm just asking for a fair chance. You know what I mean? I don't mind. I, I lost before. Nothing's wrong with losing. I can handle a loss, but I want to lose fairly. Everybody has seen the facts, and the facts are irrefutable and incontrovertible. Douglas was in the middle of a victory celebration with family and friends at the time of the joint news conference. The feelings from his camp were made crystal clear. Could you, in your mind, have gotten up earlier? Right. I wasn't, I wasn't, and this is honestly, I wasn't hurt. It was basically, you know, like being knocked down off balance. You know, it was just a shot that I didn't see, and the momentum of it made me go back. You know, it was late in the fight, but I was not, I wasn't hurt because I immediately, you know, my reaction was like, damn, you know, and I caught the, caught the count, you know. And when he said six and seven, eight, I got up, you know, I was out at the seven, I got up at eight. You know, and then, you know, it was ready to continue in the bell round. We won that fight. There's no question about it. We knew we was going to beat him when we left coming out here. We knew we was going to win this fight. Did nobody believe us, but we believed it, and we won it. It's a disgrace what they're doing. Uh, it's a total disgrace. But that shows the, the, the lack of character and, and uh, uh, respect for the game and everything else, the, the, the people that are they're doing this. It's, you know. The press contingent debated the issues at hand, most falling on the side of Buster Douglas, feeling the matter had been settled in the way it was meant to be, with the gloves. Yeah, do you, you think Douglas should have been uh, declared the winner? Uh... Douglas was the winner. Mm -hmm. He knocked the guy out. He, he whipped his butt. He beat him really bad. The surprise result cost Evander Holyfield millions. He was the next in line for a big payday against Tyson. His camp uh, hopes the indecision uh, of the WBA and WBC belief, won't cost uh, him a well-earned title shot. We, we believe that our guy, Evander, was going to be the first guy to knock Mike Tyson out. And now Buster Douglas upset the apple cart, which, you know, he fought a great fight. And now, all of a sudden, they're playing with the decision, so we don't know what's going to happen. All we want is Evander to get his shot. He's earned it. He's beaten five contenders in a row. He's been number one contender for a year. We just want him to get his shot. We want to fight Evander Holyfield and then fight Mike Tyson again. But I'll tell you what, they can forget it. They can forget it. They can go anywhere they want to go. I mean, who wants to pay to see Mike Tyson now? Especially because of this stuff. If he would have been a man, if Don King and them would have been a man and said, hey, he got beat, uh, you know, let's work out something so that they can fight again, then fine, you know, but they're taking that attitude, so to hell with them, you know. Just hours after what many considered a great moment for boxing with the heavyweight champ championship changing hands and the biggest upset in the division's history has now become yet another black eye for the sport. Three young men want to be treated fairly and equally. And now it appears at least one of them will be left out in the cold. Reporting from Tokyo, Eric Clemens, ESPN. Now, adding to the intrigue is this. If you look carefully at the HBO tape, Douglas going down to the canvas, the knockdown timekeeper who was wearing a right glove has his finger extended for the first second even as Douglas hit the floor. So he was maybe even a second uh, ahead of what the actual count should have been. There's no doubting that Mehran's count of nine took about nearly 13 seconds, but that first second was being ticked off even as the body was hitting the floor. Plus, in all fairness, yes, it was a long round, but if you look at Douglas, and we've looked at that tape numerous yeah. times now, he could have gotten up after six, but I think he stayed there. He was milking it for all it was worth trying to gather his senses, and I still believe that he beat Tyson. Yes, it did go long, but he was able to get up if he had to. And he has experienced, I mean, I, it sounds funny, but it's true. He's been knocked down before. He knows what it's like to go down. Tyson had never been knocked down as a pro. It's a new experience for him. The International Boxing Federation announced on Sunday they will recognize Buster Douglas as their heavyweight champ. The WBA and the WBC, they say they need at least another week to decide. The great upset has set off the great debate. Charlie Steiner and Al Bernstein attempt to answer the questions raised. All right, thanks, guys. So really, the question now, Bernstein, is this. Was it a matter of a long count or a slow count by referee Octavio Meron? Well, in my opinion, it was a matter of a slow count. I think what really happened... Passing the premiere of the 1972 movie, Jaws. Yeah, bigger even than Big Bad Mama. Big Mama, Mama uh, Angie yeah. Dickinson. Angie. I loved her. WBC meets February 20th. They will make that determination then. But if Tyson's defeat is upheld by that meeting in Mexico City later on this month. That HBO contract, we understand, is null and void with two more fights to go on it, which in his pocket for Mike Tyson uh, will cost him $7 million. Yeah, just it was for worth, contract what, $27 million, well, yeah, I think, total. A big, they had locked him up for a long time, so it is a mess. The heavyweight division, the winner could be fight fans. We could have uh, 
fights we never dreamed about for the next two or three years happening. And it's clear that right now this ranks with Dempsey and Tunney is one we can tell our grandchildren about. We'll have more on the history of the upset in the ring, and we will meet the new champion a bit later on. But next up on Sports Center, a more conventional spectacle. Result, no chance against Mike Tyson Saturday night. So just who is Buster Douglas? And what is he doing beating the champ? The 29-year-old Douglas, with victories in 30 of his 35 pro fights, admits he's had an erratic career, at least up until now. Always on the run, but never really going anywhere. In his only other title shot, Douglas lost the IBF championship to Tony Tucker. That was in May of 1987, when he suffered a 10th round TKO. And following the bout, Douglas fired his trainer, who happened to be his father, Bill Dynamite Douglas, a former middleweight contender. The 6'4", 228-pound Douglas actually thought of postponing his bout with Mike Tyson because three days prior to flying to Japan, Douglas buried his mother. After hours of debate with his trainer and manager, Douglas chose to go on with the show, feeling that his mother was one of the few people who believed he could beat the champ. Now the Columbus, Ohio native will return home to a hero's welcome. And when asked if the Mike Tyson era was over, Douglas said he didn't know. But he quickly added, the Buster Douglas era has just begun. And regardless of what the WBC and the WBA and their wisdom eventually do decide, the Douglas Tyson Tango takes his place now in boxing lore. Charlie Steiner looks at what happens when a sure thing dies. As James Buster Douglas prepared for the fight of his life in the land of the rising sun, no one anywhere expected the knockout of the fallen champ. In Las Vegas, where betting is legal, they didn't even make odds on this fight. This was an upset of truly historic proportions. Bigger than Ingram Mario Hansen's knockout of Floyd Patterson at Yankee Stadium in 1959, when the relatively unknown Swede with a 16-pound weight advantage over the 182-pound Patterson knocked the heavyweight champion to the canvas seven times in his three-round knockout. Patterson, though, would gain a measure of revenge a year later at the Polo Grounds in New York when he KO'd Johansson in five. Another upset that immediately comes to mind, February 25th, 1964, Miami Beach, when 22-year-old Cassius Clay, who came off a lackluster decision over Doug Jones, beat heavyweight champion Sonny Liston, who had the aura of Mike Tyson in his day. Clay in the white trunks won the fight when Liston was unable to answer the bell for the seventh round. And then 12 years ago, Leon Spinks, who had had just eight professional fights under his belt, consistently beat an aging Muhammad Ali to the punch to gain a 15-round split decision in Las Vegas. But seven months later, Ali would win the title back with a unanimous decision in New Orleans. But the WBC and the WBA have put Douglas's title on hold because of what has been labeled a long count when Douglas was knocked to the canvas at the end of the eighth round. The referee, Octavio Meron, seven hours after the fight, took the heat for the long count. I'd like to recognize my mistake because the rules are rules in every part of the world. I omit the timekeeper. I don't know why, but uh, I start my personal account and I mistake. Until last night in Tokyo, the most famous long count in boxing history took place on September 22nd, 1927, when Jack Dempsey knocked down Gene Tunney in the seventh round. But Dempsey did not immediately go to a neutral corner, so the count lasted 14 seconds. Tunney got up and eventually won a 10-round decision. But last night's astonishing decision by the WBC and the WBA to put Douglas's title in mothballs because of a referee's judgment flies in the face of a ruling by the WBA a year and a half ago when Marlon Starling was knocked out by Thomas Molinari's after the bell. <laughs> The WBA at the time said that it was a judgment call by referee Joe Cortez and the title, however questionable, belonged to Molinari. No telling what the WBA and the WBC are going to do about Buster Douglas's title. One thing is for sure, the invincibility of Mike Tyson will never be the same and the heavyweight division which seems so lackluster because of Tyson's menacing presence 
isn't so lackluster anymore. I'll give Buster Douglas, Douglas all the credit in the world. He did what Larry Holmes, uh, Tubbs, uh, Tucker, Bone Crusher, all these big, tall, strong guys, what they said they would do, Buster Douglas didn't. He stayed in close range. He fired lead right hands. He tied him up. He outstrengthed him. And, you know, there's no knocking Buster Douglas. He did exactly what no one in the world, except for Mr. Buster Douglas, believed he, he could do. And it's an incredible upset. Perhaps the biggest loser in last night's fight, Evander Holyfield, who saw a $12 million payday go down when Tyson did. But will Holyfield get a shot at Buster Douglas before Tyson gets a rematch? I've been waiting in line for a long time. I've been very patient, and I'm the number one contender. And Tyson had his chance, and he, and he lost. And I feel that it's only right for me to get my opportunity. The heavyweight division, as a result of the seemingly impossible upset by Buster Douglas last night, improbably has no champion at the moment. Although James Douglas has secured his place in boxing history forever. We haven't forgotten about the plays of the week. They are coming up shortly, along with auto racing. Don King is a master at, at, at brainwashing and poisoning the minds of fighters. He's been doing it for 20 years and very successful. MT, come home. I've said it before and I'm saying it now. Hopefully he'll see it. Hopefully he'll read it. So when I want him to come home now. I, you know, let's, let's straighten it out. Coming up next on Eyewitness Sports Scene, more on the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas fight. And the only other man to beat Mike Tyson will join us live in studio. His name is Henry Tillman. Eyewitness <laughs> Sports Scene. Mike Tyson was undefeated as a professional with a 37 0 record before last night's knockout by Buster Douglas. Tyson was beaten only twice before by Henry Tillman in the 1984 Olympic trials. Tillman joins us live in studio this evening to talk about this. And first of all, I want to thank you so much for coming in on a, on a Sunday night. We, uh, we've got quite a, quite a mess on our hands here, don't we? Or the world of boxing does. Definitely, especially with the controversy of the outcome of the fight that, uh, last night with the, the count, with the referee and everything with the Douglas knockdown. You just heard Kevin Rooney and Bill Caden talk about uh, Don King and said some very uh, derogatory negative things about him. Do you agree with what they had to say about Don? Well, you know, Don, uh, Jim, I would hate to just point the finger directly at Don King, but it's, it's mighty funny that every heavyweight that goes into Don King camp uh, eventually comes out a loser in the end. And so, you know, uh, time has proven again that something there is wrong. I can, like I say, I can't personally per se this Don King is the to it but somebody in that camp is all along while all of us including myself have been saying that mike tyson is invincible and the person to beat him hasn't been born yet and things like that you never thought that he was this this un unbeatable person did you well not not for one second jim because i mean tyson put his pants on just like i do in the morning one leg at a time and i mean we're all just men down there uh guys uh children you know and only person i fear is god it's amazing, you know, when you look at the fight last night, at the beginning of it, Tyson didn't physically look right. True, he wasn't ripple like he usually is. The, the, you know, his, uh, which was per se, his definition, the definition wasn't, of his stomach, his stomach yeah. wasn't showing him. His stomach was down, but it was like just somewhat like smooth. The muscle definition wasn't poking out through the skin, and his muscle tone just wasn't tight like it usually is. And, and that, that questioned me right there. What does that tell you about a boxer when you see that? Well, usually, especially if, he, if he's known to blow up like Tyson does after a fight, is he's either getting in a sauna and just sweating it off the water weight off and, and uh, not training really hard and coming to the fight basically dehydrated. Because there were some people who were saying that Mike had, uh, had really blown up 240 to maybe even 250 before he even went over to Tokyo to, uh, for the fight. Yes, that's the, the most odd thing about it, that he loses his weight so fast. So, you know, five, six weeks, that's hard on anyone. I don't know if you heard the story. There was one story that was uh, out about him is that, I guess it was two and a half weeks ago, he took off like five days and didn't, and didn't train at all. Did you hear anything about that? Uh, I just heard somebody speak about that just yesterday after the fight. You know, everything started coming out the woodworks mm -hmm. after the loss because everyone is searching for answers. And, and I didn't get here basically the details behind him leaving for five days like that, but that's very odd, you know, five days, well, a week or two before the, a big championship fight, a fight to leave the camp like that. Now, as far as the fight itself is concerned, there was no upper body movement 
by Mike. I mean, normally he's, he's kind of hard to hit. His head is always bobbing and moving around, and he seems like he's a very difficult target to hit, but not yesterday, though. Well, I think all that comes from uh, all the people that surround him, you know, all the different trainers and, and, and everything is confusion. And he stood straight up in front of Buster Douglas, like you were saying, and no upper body movement. And, you know, Tyson has very fast hands and very fast feet. No combinations. He threw one punch at a time. It seemed like his mind was on something else other than boxing, and that's unusual because we both know him very well, and from my uh, experiences with him, that's the one thing that he lives for, and that's the fight. That's right. Uh, the hunger wasn't there. The eye of the tiger, per se, wasn't there. He just basically cakewalked or just slipwalked right through the fight. So some of the things that some of the people are saying is true, is that he acted like he didn't want to be there, and I know that's kind of a negative thing to say, but that's what a lot, that's some of the things that I'm, that I'm deducing from what you're saying here. I mean, yes, I mean, especially if you ever seen Mike Tyson fight before, you, I mean, you know, it's like a pit bull, loose on the back of a meat truck, he's going to eat. And the other night, he just kind of was just there, you know, didn't really care if the guy hit him with the right hand. Were you surprised or shocked at the way he fought? I was very surprised, very surprised the way Tyson fought, stood there and took those punches. And uh, he's just so hard to hit, usually, because it's... He moves that head side to side, and he's get real low and make a big guy like Buster Douglas or myself have to punch down at him. And that's hard for a big guy to keep punching down. It, it opens up, or make a big guy have to open his uh, defense up. One of the things that I notice, and, and being an athlete, I uh, haven't been an athlete myself, I know that when things are going bad for you, your coach or anyone, they start howling and screaming at you when things are going bad. In his corner last night, I did not hear that. There was a lot of whispering going on. Why? Well, well I think the respect for their boss, per se. You know, they look at Tyson more or less of a boss than as uh, an athlete that they're training for competition. They were whispering, hugging, and, you know, and, and, and just as if he was winning. What is, and is everything it, was under control. Yeah, is it respect or were they scared of it? I think a little mixture of both. Mm -hmm. I don't know which side of most. I don't know if it was more fear or more respect, but it, was, it wasn't enough of fighter coach. Mm -hmm. Respect there. I mean, you know, they should have been hollering. Do you want this? Do you want this fight? Or why don't you just stay on the stool if you don't want to go win the title? You're losing. They, none of that. It was whispering and come on, you need to get inside, back him up. Just talking simple, playing as if he was winning the fight easily, hand in hand. Okay. Now the IBF has recognized uh, Douglas. The WBC and the WBA have not. How would you? Su what suggestion would you have in order to solve this whole situation? Well, you know. <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a real good question, Jim. Uh, basically, I think you know it was it was in the referee's hands to to do his job and what he's trained to do is with the referee when he turned from uh, Mike Tyson to to pick up the count from uh, the Douglas knockdown. He should have looked at the official uh, counter that sits beside the ring and picked up the count from there. From what everybody is saying, he didn't, and so I think that's something they should deal directly with the referee and uh, the replay of the tape. Do you think there will be a rematch between the two? And if there is, how will they satisfy Evander Holyfield that you know very well? Uh, well, uh, I, I, hope, I hate to see Evander have to take the, the bad end of this deal, you know, because he's proven himself. He's fought everybody that they uh, put in front of him, and he's won. And uh, I think he's more than deserving to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. One final question. Is Don King at fault for filing this protest? I don't think so. I mean, that's his job and his position. And he saw a clause there of something he can drive on. He's driving on. That's very good on his behalf. I mean, as being an uh, advisor or a promoter or whatever for Tyson. But the WBC and the WBA should not allow him to wield as much power as he does and make their own ruling and give the decision to, uh, to Douglas. Uh, <laughs> it, that's, that's a good one, Jim. But there, and there again, I think that's something they need to deal with the referee because that was his call as to pick up the count on his own mm -hmm. from one. Okay, Henry, thank you so much. And like we said, we'll be talking about this for a long, long time to come. And good luck to you in your future. Thank you very much. Okay, Henry Tillman, the only other man to defeat Iron Mike Tyson. Now, the NBA stars shine brightly today down in my... Hey, Mike Tyson, George Foreman will join us live to talk about what it means to his title hopes and who he thinks... <laughs> Well, James Buster Douglas certainly knocked out Mike Tyson, so he thinks he is. The IBF says he's the heavyweight champ, but Mike Tyson says no. 
the WBA and the WBC don't know what to think, so they're going to hold their titles vacant until somebody figures out what they should think. Believe that? Let's go to Tokyo. First of all, Don King and Mike Tyson showed up this morning at their press conference with videotapes. They brought videotapes so that they could show how slow the referee's count was in the eighth round. You see, the problem all began here in the eighth round where Buster Douglas was knocked down. Now, it is the contention of Don King and Mike Tyson that after being knocked down in the eighth round, well, the referee took too long on the count, that he was three seconds or three counts behind. Douglas says he should, you know, he was up in time. Question is, Mike Tyson, so do you still consider yourself the heavyweight champ? Absolutely, yes. But I still want to fight him again. You know what I mean? I ain't never, your guys know, knew me for years. I never cried or bitched about anything. Forgive my French. But you know what I mean? I, I, um, I, I walk it like I talk it. You know what I mean? I'm just asking for a fair chance. You know what I mean? I don't mind. I, I lost before. Nothing's wrong with losing. I can handle a loss, but I want to lose fairly. Meanwhile, there can be no dispute that, in fact, James Buster Douglas knocked Mike Tyson out in the tent. So, is he the heavyweight champ of the world? I am the heavyweight champion of the world. People all over the world see Mike Tyson go to sleep tonight. And I can't understand why anybody would say that I'm not the heavyweight champion of the world. The decision was made when it counted to 10. James Buster Douglas. So joining us live tonight is a man who will be awaiting with great interest the outcome of this controversy. Former heavyweight champion George Foreman, who's 20 and 0 since his comeback, has an impressive 65 and 2 lifetime record. George, first of all, thanks for joining us tonight. So how do you see it? Who's the heavyweight champ of the world? Well, I'm about as confused as you are about the whole situation. There are three guys in the picture now, along with Holyfield, that's Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas. I think I could clear the whole picture up by fighting all three in one night. <laughs> <laughs> George, after watching you against Jerry Cooney, I'm not about to ask you or question you, but when you're in a ring, please tell me, do you not refer solely to the referee as the man you rely on for a count? No, I, I found out earlier that you, you got to look to your corner. When I was boxing, I think that I made my mistake by losing the title. I looked to my corner when you're knocked down. Your manager is supposed to keep the count. He tells you to stay down, and then when your head is clear up, cleared up, he tells you when to get up. I think that uh, that's the way it has always been. All right, so now, George, the WBC and the WBA both say they're going to withhold the decision until they have meetings. If you were the commissioner here, how would you rule on those two? Well, boxing has always been a hotbed for controversy. It's been going on ever since the sport started, and it's going to be awful confuse, confusing. I wouldn't know what to do in that situation. It looks like a rematch is somewhere down the line. I don't know how soon. I'd like to be in there first and then eventually let them meet again or decide who is the champion. I will tell you that. I'd like to fight that Buster Douglas right quick. Oh, I'm sure you would. So will a whole bunch of other guys. But Buster <laughs> Douglas, George, he did put on one heck of a display. He beat up Mike Tyson last night. Yeah, well, Mike Tyson is an energy fighter in the first place. You go into a country like Japan and you stay for too long, your, your energy starts to evaporate. And he never had a whole lot of skills anyway. He just had a good, quick punch. And uh, he lost the fight, it seems, but you never know. I'm just going to await the decision of the, the various boxing committees. George, I want to show a quick piece of tape from your second round knockout when you knocked out Jerry Cooney. I think that there, you really convinced a lot of people who said, come on, the guy's 41, he's over the hill, doesn't belong in the ring. Hey, but wait a minute, folks. He put out another heavyweight who is, some people say, still capable of a knockout punch. So, George, do you think you've earned the right and the reputation to finally be given true recognition and respect? There's no doubt in my mind. And people all over the country got to realize now that the, the toughest guy out there is a middle-aged man above 40. And not only am I a, have a victory mentally, but the whole United States and guys who are above 40 can shake their hands and applaud because we have shown them that we can do it. George, my next question is, so who do you have your manager go after? Do you go after Buster Douglas or do you go after Mike Tyson or Evander Holyfield? Where do you go? Well, the, the fire truck is following me right now. I think that if they really want to make a good payday, they're going to have to come and see George Foreman. I would love to fight Mike Tyson. I would love to fight uh, Evander Holyfield and uh, Buster Douglas. And I think they would like to fight me now. It's all about money after a while. Once you get those belts, they can't feed you those belts. As a matter of fact, you can't even eat them. <laughs> You're going to have to come and fight. <laughs> You're going to have to come and fight for that money. George Foreman, my last question. Do you, do you know anything at all about Buster Douglas prior to this knockout? Just an ordinary fighter. He can't fight. Can't fight a lick. So Tyson really has lived too high on the hog, 
and it, it should demonstrate to all the young people in the country, if you want to be a great athlete, you're going to have to live clean, treat the public real nice, because the title doesn't belong to you, it belongs to the, to the public. It, it, it has always belonged to Joe Public. If they're behind you, they'll stick with you to the end, but if not, you don't have much to fall back on. George Foreman, you are an, indeed an amazing man, and I thank you for joining us here on the Sports Machine. It's always a pleasure. I don't know what your next fight is, but you sure want a lot Maybe, of new fans. I want to get that done, King. <laughs> I'm sure you do. George Foreman, <laughs> thank you for joining us. This is always a thrill a minute race. 15 laps into the race, Keith Wade in the center in the orange car. He gets himself in trouble. 10 cars would be involved in this wreck. A total of 10 cars were damaged as a result of Keith Wade getting turned sideways, everybody hitting everybody. Then on lap 38, the action would continue. In turn two, Ramos Stott goes over and over and over, rolling three times over, Miraculously, Ramos Stott would walk away without serious injury. But then just five laps from the finish of this race, veteran race car driver Slick Johnson was making a comeback from a 1988 accident. He gets sideways. Slick Johnson hits the wall. Coming down off of the wall on the right of your screen, he gets hit full force broadside. Tonight, Slick Johnson is in serious and critical condition. The next accident was the most brutal that we have seen in years. An ambulance attendant, Mike Stanley, was hit while attending an injured driver. Mike Stanley, attending an injured driver, suddenly a car would go sideways. And Mike Stanley miraculously was not killed. In fact, he is in serious but stable condition in a hospital tonight. The man who would go on to win the race would be Jimmy Horton of Hamilton, New Jersey, who won the ARCA 200 under the caution flag. Uh, count? Yes. Get up in the nine uh, seconds. But then the official timekeeper count? Yes, no. He started counting one when the timekeeper had three. Under those circumstances, I am presently withholding the recognition to whatever decision was issued today and calling a meeting in Mexico City for the week of the 20th of February with the eight continental federations to make a final decision. Mm, something smells. The thing to keep in mind here, above all else, folks, is that the referee is the boss in the ring at all times. What he says and does goes. That's the way it's supposed to be anyway. Now it seems very possible that some very powerful people are about to change the rules on us. Buster Douglas may not end up with what he truly deserves after that fight on Saturday night. His only consolation may be that he knows he won it. And anyone who is watching knows it, too. Well, let's go to the NBA. Yeah, I'll be anxious to hear what you uh, have to say about uh, Tyson Douglas' uh, hassle there. I have some yeah. comments to make, but first I would like to explain. We all know that. Two of boxing's three heavyweight titles are still arguing. By all accounts, James Buster Douglas was the better man on Saturday night in Tokyo, but Mike Tyson and his people still feel that Douglas got more than the allotted 10 seconds in the eighth round to recover from a knockdown. There's an investigation of the matter by the WBC and the WBA. Now, both fighters returned to the States today. Thousands greeted Douglas in Columbus, Ohio. He donned an unofficial WBC belt, and in New York, Tyson vowed he would be back. A bad situation at the time, but I'll be okay. Buster Douglas fought a great fight, and I'll be champion again within six months. I think it's just bogus, you know. I mean, to be a champion is one thing, but... But to honor that championship and accept defeat as well as victory is another. And I don't think he's accepting defeat at all. I think what you, what's done is done. Buster Douglas is the champion. Justice. Fair play. It's nothing about anything else other than fair play. That's all we want. That's the shocking thing about the fight, and I found the most sickening thing about the fight, is Mike Tyson leaving the ring, hurt, crying, knocked out for the first time in his career. 
And there is Don King smirking and smiling around the canvas, walking up to Buster Douglas. This is his M.O. He's done it in the past. I never thought he'd do it with Mike Tyson. He did it. All right, let's be honest. Boxing has not exactly had a great reputation for honesty and credibility in the past. So here comes a wonderful opportunity for boxing to climb a bit into respectability. You got a relative unknown knocking out an unbeaten champion. And instead of admiration and jubilation, what we get is a sore head manager promoter pulling the puppet strings of the WBC and the WBA, who in turn are refusing to recognize Buster Douglas as the champion. Something about an alleged long count when Tyson floored Douglas two rounds earlier. Now, a fighter is supposed to watch the referee, who admittedly was behind the timekeeper. That's not Douglas' fault. If you're going to file a protest, you do it at the time. You don't wait till two rounds later after Douglas knocks out Tyson. In baseball, you can't file a protest after the game for something that happened in the sixth inning. Public opinion seems to be... We'll get to fight the winner. Further details, including how Don King got around boxing's sanctioning bodies and just who made this remarkable deal, coming up later when I rejoin you for the sports report. Jim Brady. ...to get the right camera angle. And the distant saucer should have been hazier in the heavy smog. The likely explanation? The object in the snapshot was tiny, less than a few inches across, and very close to the van. It Is this real? Taken over Catalina Island in 1972 by a Navy cameraman, this is considered by many to be the definitive evidence of saucers over California. At the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's Image Processing Lab, the enlarged. Stretch that. That just looks like a blob. Go ahead and bring up uh, frame number 12. Dr. Nathan painstakingly reviewed the film and selected the clearest frames. We're seeing something white on top, and we're, we're seeing pretty much what's a definite airplane at this point. We're seeing a wing, we're seeing a cockpit, we're seeing a, a landing structure, and we're seeing a tail. So I would say that that uh, pretty much converts the UFO into a regular airplane. Up, they had a great fall. And then all the Dun King horses and his men can't put him back together again. All right, more on Mike Tyson in just a second. First off, in the heavyweight division go from here. Let's not look back. Let's look ahead if we can. I wouldn't be surprised to see the title split off uh, just as it did after the Leon Spinks Muhammad Ali fight in 1978. Because the WBA will say, you got to fight this guy. BC will say, fight this guy. IBF say, fight that guy. And it could very well split off. And you can't fight two or three guys at the same time. So what's up next now for Mike Tyson? Well, uh, he's at an unexpected crossroads. All of a sudden, he's human. He's not unbeatable. He's, he's not invincible anymore. He's human, and that's good. A comeback to the title could indeed uh, rank him right up there with the greatest heavyweights of all time. Uh, an unsuccessful comeback, and he's one of those guys 25 years from now was saying, oh, yeah, Tyson, wasn't he that young guy back in the late 80s who was a phenom when he was 22 but then peaked and fizzled out? And what's up next for uh, Mike Tyson? He is scheduled to be the referee for the WWF wrestling match between Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage in a couple of weeks. You can bet there will be no long count in that match. Elsewhere today, Jose Canseco, $2 million. Losers and would-be winners. Some of it confirmed since we started this newscast tonight, Bree. On board Donald Trump's plane, returning from Saturday night's Tyson-Douglas fight in Japan, four of boxing's heavyweight promoters struck the deal, which will bring Buster Douglas his undisputed heavyweight championship and give Mike Tyson his rematch in June. Action News has learned from sources close to the agreement that the deal will proceed thusly. Within the week, possibly as early as Tuesday afternoon, Tyson's camp will totally drop its complaint about the long count. The WBA will then recognize Douglas as the champion, as the WBC just has in the time since we opened this newscast with this report. Douglas, who returned to his native Columbus, Ohio in the afternoon, will get to fight Tyson first in Atlantic City in June because both the WBA and WBC will promptly waive their requirement that he first fight the top-rated challenger, Evander Holyfield. Our sources say that Holyfield will also be taken care of. He'll fight on the undercard to the Tyson-Douglas rematch. He'll receive $3 million to battle the stiff of his choice. Holyfield, in the black hat there, escorting Tyson upon his return to New York, will get to fight the winner of Tyson-Douglas II in November for the big money, again in Atlantic City. As we said, our sources report the deal was hammered out on the return flight from Tokyo of Donald Trump's private jet. 
Tyson was represented by Don King, Douglas by his manager John Johnson, and Holyfield by his co-promoters Dan Duva and Shelley Finkel. Part of our report is confirmed in Tuesday's editions of the New York Times, which quotes Donald Trump as saying, he has the deal for the Tyson-Douglas rematch on June 18th. Action News can't independently confirm that actual date. The other news, the Kings may ask... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay, okay, thank you, Thanks, Freddie. Fred. Now, still to come, we've got David Chin. Declared Buster Douglas, its heavyweight mm -hmm. champ. Action News has learned from informed sources that this was the result of a deal orchestrated by Don King, that it will be followed by both the WBC and the WBA sanctioning a Douglas-Tyson rematch in June in Atlantic City. Evander Holyfield will fight on the undercard of that rematch, and then he'll face the Douglas-Tyson winner in November. So some justice is served, but Holyfield yeah. gets it in the neck again. To some degree, certainly, but he does get money for waiting. A lot of it. Always in boxing. Yeah. Next up, the wow. next generation of toys. Slanky's never got a reception like this one. A busted mic, and, uh, and, then, uh, and now they're trying to take the title away from him and everything. Just my personal opinion, Buster's the champion. There's no way around that, right? Because as I understand the rule, it's not a 10 second count, it's a 10 count. It doesn't, the rule is not say it has to be 10 seconds down, it has to be a 10 count. So it doesn't matter if it went a minute and a half, I guess. So, uh, and also I have definite proof that Buster's a champion because this morning we just got word he received a call from Robin Givens asking him to marry her. So I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we have, this is, uh, we're, we're excited about this, we have an audio tape of the, uh, the actual count from the referee, and uh, I don't know, maybe you can judge for yourself. They say it was a long count, I don't know. Anyway, uh, watch your monitors and listen, folks. Here's the, uh, here's the actual audio tape. One, two, three, four, five. Five and a half, six, seven, Come on, sleepyhead, time to get up. Eight, nine, how many fingers am I holding up? Two, three, four. Wow. We, uh, we have a uh, jam-packed show, as always, here, and we're happy to welcome back a fellow who is the anchor man for HBO's new Not Necessarily the News. He also has his own HBO comedy special, which debuts at this week. Dr. Elias Saganem of the WBC, who awarded the title belt to Douglas in the ring Saturday, said that what we all know anyway, and I quote, Douglas knocked Tyson out, and that's a fact, and that's it as far as I'm concerned, unquote. Ghanem is a member of that executive committee of the WBC, says he'll resist any effort to take the title from James Buster Douglas. Now, there are also reports that the WBA will soon recognize Douglas officially as the champ, despite Don King's protest to the contrary. Another man who doesn't feel the least bit sorry for Don King or the WBA or the WBC, for that matter, is well-known boxing promoter Bob Arum. Anybody that gives any credence to these organizations has to be out of their mind. Uh, boxing is a sport uh, that operates under a stigma in any event. I mean, it's not well regulated, it's not well organized, and then when you have these uh, Noriegas <laughs> with their hands in the tail running things, then you got a real, real big problem. And indeed, Suleiman and Mendoza uh, are to their organizations the same thing Noriega was to Panama. They'll do anything and everything uh, for their own gain. Agree or disagree, you always know where Mr. Aram stands. Now, entrepreneur Donald Trump says he already has an agreement with Don King to stage the Tyson-Douglas rematch June 18th in Atlantic City. This according to reports in Tuesday's editions of the New York Times. This item might be of interest to Evander Holyfield, who still expects to fight champion Buster Douglas around that time. in Atlantic City, there has yet to be any confirmation from King. There could be a hitch if the boxing organizations decide that number one contender Evander Holyfield should get the first shot at Douglas. The Men are trading their ties for trunks at upscale workout salons like this one in Dallas. Others prefer the grittier scene, like this old Skid Row gem in San Francisco. There's no controversy. She knows boxing, by the way. 
<laughs> There's no controversy. Don King is not demanding. He's asking for a rematch. Suddenly, Mike Tyson has respect for Buster Douglas. I lost. The reason I lost, you know, I mean, not irrelevant. Yes, the loss is a loss. I mean, I respect that, and I respect the fact that the new, the new champion won the title. But the only thing I'm saying, I wasn't trying. I wouldn't want the title on a change decision. You know what I mean? You win the title in the ring, you lose it in the ring. I believe. I'm just saying that Mike's not going on the deep end. He's not discouraged. The only thing I asked for is just a rematch. That's all. Mike Tyson may have to get in line. This afternoon, Buster Douglas said his first choice to fight is the number one contender, Evander Holyfield. Now, then he, you know, you talk about money, though. I mean, he can get three times the money if he fights Tyson. So will money talk? June 18th seems to be the likely date of a fight, period. NBA tonight, Lakers are off. Yeah, as long as Don King's around, I don't think it will be settled, per se. <laughs> money talks, right? Buster Douglas is now calling the shots. That's kind of neat, kind of. I mean, you know, Don King's still in there. But he's the undisputed champion. WBC, WBA, IBF, they all recognize this. And it puts Mike Tyson in an unusual position. He's the challenger. Don King has been humbled. We don't have a rematch uh, right now. What we're trying to do is to get one. The only thing I ask for is just a rematch. That's all. Simple as that. Once I get a rematch, I'll take care of everything from then. That's all I'm asking for. Evander Holyfield is also asking for a fight, even though he'd uh, make much more fighting Tyson. Buster Douglas says he feels he should fight the number one contender. And that means that would be Evander Holyfield. There, there will definitely be a fight. It'll be at Donald Trump's hotel. Ivana Trump will probably want a piece of it. But that's for the legal reporter. We'll stay out of that. And Robin Gibb, whoa, whoa, you're digging up some old dirt there, Pat. Anyway, so we'll move on and we'll get back to that as the days progress. NBA tonight, the Clippers are... Douglas as heavyweight champ, but the controversy involving Mike Tyson's loss remains. Tonight, we spoke with Larry Rosadia, the original choice to referee the fight, but WBC Chief Jose Suleiman switched to a ref from his home country. Rosadia wound up a judge for the fight. Amazingly, the only judge who had Douglas ahead at fight's end. I can't uh, imagine what the Japanese judges were looking at, but uh, uh, Douglas was doing it all. Rosadia said a 10 count in boxing is not necessarily a 10 second count and added that referee Octavio Meran did his job well and that Douglas hardly benefited from any extra seconds. I could see that Douglas was looking at the referee. He, was, uh, he wasn't uh, on focus. He was looking at, at him. Immediately after the fight, promoter and Tyson manager Don King took his venom out on WBC chief Jose Suleiman. A friend of mine that was taking pictures heard him just screaming at Suleiman, who was sitting there, telling him in no uncertain terms, your boy caused my boy, he's losing because of you. He said, change it, get that thing changed. He also believes Mehran was forced to say he made a mistake. He's from Mexico, and he has to uh, abide by, he said by the rules, but I think it's by what Mr. Suleiman suggested to him. And that Suleiman is a bit too close to King. Let's put it this way, is the Mexican press completely wrong about him? Because they say that all the time. He's constantly in the papers about it, and they constantly say, well, whatever he wants, he gets. Later in sports, we'll talk about the next chapter in the story, the probable rematch between Douglas and Tyson, and how it impacts number one contender Evander Holyfield. And yes, that may be a Donald Trump fight. In fact, it is. It's all this, right? It all comes in a dollar. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. In Canada, a heavyweight champ. And a Hollywood actress is given a special honor today by a group of Harvard students. This is all coming up in Jan's rematch. Of course, and do you smell something fishy? Could it be? Here's Stu Nahan. Shall we do that? Yes, indeed. Thank you. There is finally one world heavyweight champion in the boxing world tonight because in the last 24 hours, both the WBA and the WBC have made sudden turnarounds. They've joined the IBF in recognizing James Buster Douglas as the champ after the weekend Tokyo knockout of Mike Tyson. Now, they had some behind-the-scenes deal-making between Don King and representatives of Evander Holyfield and Douglas, and this has set the stage for a Tyson-Douglas rematch. 
As the number one contender, Holyfield is supposed to get the first title shot under the rules of all three boxing councils. Apparently, those bodies are willing to break that rule. Holyfield reportedly will get $1 million to allow a Tyson rematch with Douglas in June in Atlantic City, plus he, Holyfield, will get another $3 million to fight somebody else on the undercard. Holyfield would beat the winner of the Tyson-Douglas match. Either Don King, Mike Tyson, the WBA, and the WBC were going to recognize and apologize to James Douglas because they sure, sure did not show him respect after what he did and so on, or they were all going to be buried in the same hole. I would say the left-handed type of alcohol that has been bestowed on me that would make me such a mystique and such a master of trickeration that uh, I could pull that off. Well, we've got a baseball lock catch, and it's going to come quickly. I don't know why. Buster Douglas is a nice guy, but he'll probably get the heck beat out of him next time. Well, it's uh, official. Almost three days late and a bit grimy from being mishandled, Buster Douglas has finally been handed the heavyweight title. Douglas was awarded the title he won in Tokyo today by the WBC and WBA after promoter Don King dropped his long count protest. Tyson praised Douglas and said he never wanted a tainted title. What he does want is a rematch. I wouldn't want the title on a change decision, you know what I mean? You win the title in the ring, you lose it in the ring, I believe. I'm just saying that Mike is not going on a deep end, he's not discouraged. The only thing I ask for is just a rematch, that's all. A July 18th rematch in Atlantic City has been tentatively set pending a deal with Douglas. The new champ would get 15 million and Tyson 10, more than Douglas could get for fighting number one contender Evander Holyfield. Now Buster Douglas becomes the champion. So now I think it's only fitting and proper that Buster Douglas would reciprocate. Holyfield was supposed to meet Tyson July 18th. Instead, he'll accept an estimated $3 million payday to fight on the rematch undercard with a guaranteed shot at the winner. You know, I will be compensated for the, for the rematch and mean that I won't lose the payday that I'm supposed to have against Tyson. So he wins either way. Well, thanks. From the Douglas-Tyson fight, and here's the new scenario. Don King tells his cronies at the WBC and WBA to give it up. Buster Douglas is the undisputed heavyweight king. You gotta love this guy, Buster, right? Here he is with the belt and a hooded sweatshirt. I love him, but first, here's Mike Tyson. I wouldn't want the title on a change decision, you know what I mean? You win the title in the ring, you lose it in the ring, I believe. I'm just saying that Mike is not going on a deep end, he's not discouraged. The only thing I ask for is just a rematch, that's all. Simple as that. Once I get a rematch, I'll take care of everything from then. But I was willing to fight a Vander Holyfield first due to the fact that he was the one that was going to fight the winner, of, the winner of the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas fight. So it seems as though it's been a lot being said, so I really don't know uh, what's going on, and I don't care who it is now. Buster, relax, because it's a done deal. June 18th, Douglas Tyson and Donald Trump's joint in Jersey. That's the deal on the undercard. Holyfield against some designated stiff, plus a steel cage affair, Donald and Ivana Trump. That could be the nastiest fight of the night, Warren and Wendy. You don't get the impression that Buster is quite his own man. Or... Buster is now, uh, will go where the money takes him. Why mm -hmm. shouldn't he make $20 million fighting Tyson instead of maybe no three reason. or four fighting Holyfield? Yeah, knock the guy out. Uh, you know, isn't he beautiful, Buster, wearing, you know, wearing that championship belt with a hooded sweatshirt <laughs> in Columbus, Ohio? That is a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. That is Don King's only in America. The Let's go back to the NBA. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it amazing oh, tonight? Great. The, you know, vintage NBA highlights. The new sources <laughs> close to the scheming about the Donald Trump deal to bring Buster Douglas the undisputed heavyweight crown and Mike Tyson the rematch. No sources required anymore. The Treaty of Trump has all come out officially now. Douglas gets his title. Tyson gets his rematch in June. Holyfield will be on the undercard to Tyson Douglas, too, and then he gets the winner in November, and Ivana gets 37%. <laughs> Hockey kings off. Quebec breaks. Oh, we can expect a gorilla population explosion. The zoo says gorillas often take a break from breeding until their small babies are through nursing. Three years. All right. On Saturday, the boxing world came around on Tuesday. Coming up on SportsCenter, Buster Douglas is finally the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. The dispute...
and welcome to another edition of Sports Center. I'm Robin Roberts, joined by Chris Myers. We've got a lot to tell you about upsets in college basketball. Only official. Abraham Lincoln said you can fool some of the people some of the time, all of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all the time, Robin. And I think that Don King has learned that. The Wizards of Boxing Tuesday announced what we all already knew after watching Saturday's bombing in Tokyo. James Buster Douglas is absolutely, positively, undeniably the heavyweight champion of the world. Don King, who has done more whining than the group air supply since his champ was knocked down, was left verbally backpedaling after the WBA and WBC cleared the air. Bob Lee has more. It was all just a misunderstanding. The WBC never said Buster Douglas wasn't champion. They just never said that he was the champion. I, as a human being, a being made a big mistake. I did not think at the time of the disrespect that I was paying Buster Douglas at the time. The WBC members have demanded that we express immediately our official recognition of Buster Douglas as champion of the world. Other voices changed as well. Mike Tyson after the fight. I'm just asking for a fair chance. I mean, I don't mind. I lost before. Nothing's wrong with losing. I can handle a loss, but I want to lose fairly. Yeah, I lost. I mean, don't make excuses. The loss, the loss, you lost. I mean, these things happen. You know, it's just a temporary minor setback. Don King in Tokyo. Everybody has seen the facts, and the facts are irrefutable and incontrovertible. Don King today. You merely let us defer to that champion and give him his just dues in his moment of glory. Team Tyson explained their protest was to ensure they would be first in line to fight Douglas. King said it helped to market that rematch. We have established the controversy that's necessary to give the public an opportunity to make their demand as to uh, what they want to see. Uh, we, we are withdrawing all protests, so it's no longer a part of the governing bodies uh, to make a decision. There is no more protest. Meanwhile, Buster Douglas enjoys his role as hometown hero and media sensation. There is no clear answer to the question, what next? Well, as far as I'm con concerned, Evander Holyfield is my first uh, title defense. But he's the number one reigning contender, and he was scheduled to fight the, the winner of the Douglas Tyson match. Number one contender Evander Holyfield says there are $3 million of Don King's money waiting for him to wait out this title shot, but... We don't have a rematch uh, right now, Phil. What we're trying to do is to get one. While Donald Trump says it's a done deal. The Mike Tyson fight seems that it's coming to Trump Plaza in uh, June, probably around June 18th, against uh, Buster Douglas. They're going to be calling it once and for all, so we'll see what happens. It is a classic Rubik's Cube of boxing. The WBC-WBA hesitation to anoint Douglas found one prominent critic of his own sport. It's not well regulated, it's not well organized, and then when you have these uh, Noriegas <laughs> with their hands in the tail running things, then you got a real, real big problem. And indeed, Suleiman and Mendoza uh, are to their organizations the same thing Noriega was to Panama. Nobody but the boxers should be the people to solve controversies. But it was promoter Shelley Finkel that gave the story the ultimate perspective. I would consider anything if it makes sense. It, I would consider anything if it makes dollars, okay? <laughs> As mentioned, a Holyfield not happy about having to fight on the undercard, if that is the case. He has also been offered the chance, uh, whoever wins the uh, Tyson-Douglas bout, if they fight first, he could pick up another 8 to $12 million if he fights the winner of that match. But Holyfield wants and deserves Douglas before Tyson. Dan, and welcome to Barbara Sheen's Fight Corner. My guest tonight is the one and only heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster Douglas. Here's the way I see it, Buster. The belt is yours, you're the champ, and anyone who disagrees can go to hell. Thank you, Barbara. Now that we have that out of the way, let me ask you another question. Do these slacks go with this jacket? I must have changed a thousand times this morning. Sure, you look great. Thanks. You, you know, by the way, Barbara, I agree with Buster. You look terrific. I like the way you dress. Thank the Lord. Approval from a guy who dresses like a car salesman. Is this Dick Cabot? <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> All right, Hal, this is getting a little ugly. Go ahead and start the opening. <laughs> he wishes. Your host, Dave Buster Letterman. So listen to this. Last night, I got no sleep last night. First of all, here's what. Three o'clock in the morning, 
my alarm system goes off. So right away, if you have the history of alarms going off in my house that I've had, you go a little crazy. So I, I jump out of bed, I race into the living room just in time to see my brother-in-law running down my driveway with my blender. Wow, what a... Thank you very much. I know, I know. I appreciate that. That's applause for no reason. And, and ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. That's the purpose of TV. Listen to this, James Earl Ray serving a 99-year prison term for the assassination of Martin Luther King has filed for a divorce from his wife of 12 years. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know they were having problems. Is it official now? Yes. The new heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster Douglas and... The crowd goes crazy whenever there's a new heavyweight champion. And uh, also on the uh, would be W. Gentlemen, is it time now to bring out our first guest? Uh, he has uh, recently become the uh, world heavyweight champion of the world uh, by knocking out uh, Mike Tyson in Tokyo uh, last Sunday. Here, take a look. at. We have the exclusive footage from HBO of the knockout. There he goes. Boom. There it is. That's one punch affair, and he was out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster Douglas. Come on. You know, not, not everybody can wear a nicely tailored gray suit and a belt like that. <laughs> Boy, congratulations. Now, which, which one of the belts is that? Were there two involved here? No, it's three sanc sanc sanctioning bodies, right. and this is the IBF. Uh, this is the IBF? Yeah, yeah, International Boxing Federation. Yeah. This was the belt that uh, recognized me immediately after the fight. Uh -huh. Well, congratulations again. Now, without, without a doubt, without saying, this has got to be the biggest day in your life so far, I would think. Without huh? a doubt. Yeah. You know, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's been a long time coming. How long have you been fighting? Through. Since uh, when I started when I was 10. Uh -huh. I fought in amateurs from 10 to 15. Then I retired, basically, and started playing basketball, football, and baseball. And how long have you been a professional boxer? Uh, since 1981, August of 81. Did you, did you have any, any thought at all that you could actually defeat Tyson? I mean, as, as a fighter, everybody's got to go in there and think to themselves, I have a chance, or there's no point in, in putting on your well, trunks, I really is believe, it? I really believe that I had an outstanding chance. I went in there and did the things that Buster Dulles can do. Uh -huh. and, and what are those things? What, what about you as a fighter were able to uh, defeat and neutralize Tyson? Well, keep focused and uh, a lot of power. A lot uh, of power and keep focused. And, you know, sticking and moving. Sticking and moving. Now, now he, he knocked you down. Yes. Okay, what round was that? Eighth round. Now, now that was the, the controversial long count, right? Right, right? right. Now, now who times that count? Is it the referee or somebody well, the referee, at ringside? referee. He's in charge of uh, the two combatants in the ring. Mm -hmm. And that's who I look up to as far as to keep, pick up the count. Yeah. And when I was dropped and got... What, now, what dropped you? What, what punch dropped you? An uppercut. An uppercut landed yeah. right here on the chin? Well, I imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> and... and did, did that hurt you? Did you feel it? No, you... it was more more like a, you know, off balance, a push, because mm -hmm. I was very coherent. Right. I immediately, if you see the tape, I hit the canvas, like to say, you know, dang. Um, yeah. So you, you knew to yourself, <laughs> you, knew it, you knew immediately that you weren't hurt. So you think, right. well, that's good. I can continue now. Right. Okay. So now you're keeping an eye, and, and the, the purpose yeah. of the 10 count is for you to kind of gather yourself. Well, and then... you got to get up before 10 and it was over. That's right. But it's the, uh, I picked up the count and it was six. Right. And uh, instead of jumping straight up, and I waited till seven when he was going into eight. Now, right. Then you get up. Get up. Right. Now, now the referee never being a boxer myself, the referee's not looking at a watch when he's no, making this count, no, is he? No, it's a count. It's a count. So he's just saying to himself, one, two, three. That's yeah, how he's doing it. Right. It's not. It's not an actual ten seconds. All, yeah. all right. So now, if the count is a little bit long. Big deal. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. I'm so, just following instructions. Right. So what was the big stink about that? Well, they made a big deal of it, you know, saying that it took uh, 14 seconds or so, and I got an extra amount of time to get, you know, get uh, 
regrouped. Right, but what if the guy had counted one, two, three, come on, come on, four, five. Right, right. So they, were just... saying, they were saying that it's a timekeeper on the side of the ring, and uh, he was at four when, when the referee started at one. Right. So, but uh, we have to discount this because of the human factor. Right. And without exactly. that uh, in sports, I think we might as well forget it, don't exactly. you? Yeah. So now, who makes the big fuss? Is it Don King? Is it Tyson? They're both upset well, about this? Don King that, yeah. that uh, had made the statement. Uh, you know why he makes the big stink about this, Buster? Do you know why? No, Do you I really any, don't. In a word, you want to know why? Why is that? He's a baby. He's a baby. Now, will you drive me home now? Yes. Uh, what, are we, what are we doing here? We have, to, we have to do a commercial. We'll be right back here with uh, Buster. Ladies and gentlemen, the new heavyweight uh, champion of the world, uh, James Buster Douglas. So then, uh, oh, now maybe Don get his hair taken care of. <laughs> uh, so now the fight progresses, you get up, and then when did you knock uh, Tyson down and out? Uh, a round later. Uh -huh, one round later. later. So this is in round 10, ten, ten then. Yeah. Yeah. Had you hurt him at all in the fight before that? Yeah, I think I caught him with some shots early in the mm -hmm. fight, but uh, I actually, after that knockdown, I came back in the ninth round and had him on the ropes, and I missed him with two uh, big shots that I think would have taken him out. Now the big shots left, right? Rights. Right. Is that your, that's your money punch, I would think? No, either hand. Either Ooh, hand. Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, did, did, did you and Tyson talk at all during the fight in, in each other's ear, uh, saying nasty things back and forth at all? No. You didn't say anything to him? No. What about no. after the fight? What did he say to you? No, he, he had left the ring. He, really? He didn't say anything? He didn't come no. over and say congratulations? or No, what well, he said, he, was, he wanted to come over, but it was so crowded. Very crowded. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he just went on left. Uh, and it, I, I'm told that you do an impression of Mike Tyson. Is that true or not? No, not, no, I don't. I, I don't know where I came about. I think that's probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, so the day after the fight, I didn't, I didn't watch the fight. In all honesty, frankly, I was, was long asleep. And, and I'm hearing this on the radio. People are calling and talking about it, and then they're saying, well, you know what the deal is here? Nobody's watching Tyson fights. Nobody's paying money to buy tickets to go see these fights. He can't find anybody to fight. Of course, they had to manipulate something like this to regenerate interest not only in his career but in the heavyweight division. Uh -huh. Now, you're in here. You've won it. You've knocked the man out. How, how do you respond to people who may be harboring that notion? Well, uh, I know that I went in there to do my job, and I, I succeeded at it. Yeah. I did what no man has done before before me, and uh, you know I had an opportunity, and I made the best of it. Now, did did you? F yeah. Well, sure, you deserve that. <laughs> it it really was a long shot, wasn't it? In Las Vegas, they weren't well, even giving odds. Didn't run odds on it, you yeah. know. Uh, but like I said before. We all knew that if I went in there and applied myself accordingly, that I would have a problem with Mike Tyson. Yeah. And I did, and that's what the results ended up. Yeah. So, now what are you going to do? I know what I would do if I were you. What's that? Well, I would, first of all, I'd make some money. I'd go out and I'd find some bums. I'd have a fight like once a month, get as much money as I could, and just start turning lights out, left well, and right. Well, <laughs> I, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. I have now, to... how come? Because I wouldn't be motivated enough to uh, apply myself. Uh -huh. You know, I have to have a big challenge in front of me. And the big challenge, I'm guessing, is the rematch. Well, accordingly, uh, the rematch or uh, a fight with Evander Holyfield. Yeah. The jury's still out. We don't know exactly what we're going to do. It's the uh, whoever comes up with the most money. Yeah. Uh, but there... I mean, this, this is, I've said this before in, in other circumstances, but again, this is a version of the American dream, because here That's you are, is. this is like Rocky, this is the movie Rocky, except you knock out the every, champ. Every, you know, stick, with, stick with me, stick me with Rocky, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you, you don't want to be called Rocky? No. Well, you know, that wasn't my idea. No. No, that wasn't, I, that, that happened in a meeting, our producer, the little skinny guy over there. Uh, he's, he's the one who said Rocky, yeah. That's, that's him right there. Look at it. He, he can't even make a fist, that guy. And he, uh, Maybe we get him first. Yeah, Maybe all right, first. sure. I challenge you. Uh, so, so now, it, uh, say you get to the point where you, you're going to defend your title. You're the heavyweight champion of the world. You know, and it really hasn't sunk in yet. Yeah, I know. would, yeah. Um, I mean, arriving at the airport, 
And I thought I was just going to just come on in, get in the car. Nope, not anymore. On, but, all that's you know, different. Right. You're the champ now. Right, and it's like, I wonder why all these people are around me. And I, <laughs> I'm the heavyweight champion. Yeah, there you go. Uh, It seems, uh, I mean, what you said about making the most of an opportunity, uh, you are, again, to be congratulated for that, and, and I couldn't be happier for you. Thanks, and good luck, whatever you do, and, and I hope you come back and see us. Buster Douglas, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be, we'll be right back. wound his way through the low-income neighborhood where he grew up in a 20-car motorcade. The parade concluded at City Hall, where about 15,000 people braved 29-degree temperatures and a few flurries to listen to their hometown hero. Coming out today showing their support and appreciation. It's a great honor. And Columbus made the best of it, baby. I couldn't have did it without the support of Columbus, my family. Coach Boston team, I love you. The crowd along the parade route, about 25,000, got a little worked up overseeing Buster Douglas. One woman was slightly injured in a surge toward the cars, but she was treated and released at a local hospital. It's by his hometown of Columbus, Ohio today. A crowd estimated at about 1,500 stood outdoors in 29 degree temperatures to cheer the man who accomplished perhaps the biggest upset in boxing history when he knocked out Mike Tyson last weekend in Tokyo. If Douglas insists on delaying the rematch until September, then Duva says he'll exercise Holyfield's right to the next title shot. Duva will discuss his position tomorrow afternoon here on NBC when we'll also be joined by Douglas and his manager, John Johnson. Most of the base hey, Bob Cast was back in New York, as we told you midway through the first half of the Missouri-Oklahoma game. Apparently, a deal was struck last night between John Johnson, the manager of the new heavyweight champion Buster Douglas, and Dan Duva, who represents the number one contender, undefeated Evander Holyfield, who is 23-0, and that deal has it for Tyson to wait for a year. Mike Tyson is going to have to wait till next February or March because Evander Holyfield and Buster Douglas apparently will fight in September in Las Vegas. Holyfield will get the first shot. Joining us now from Columbus, Ohio, are John Johnson and his fighter, Buster Douglas. Now, John, a lot of people are going to say, first of all, that this deal is motivated by your personal dislike for Don King. Was that a factor? No, that's not a factor at all, Bob. You know, we plan, as far as Don King's concerned, to give him back more money than what he has paid James throughout his career. And we wish Don King and, and Mike Tyson them the best until we fight him again. Uh, but Don King is no longer uh, involved with James Douglas in any way. And that was created by Don King's behavior towards, Don, uh, towards James Douglas uh, after the fight and since that point in time. And that's it. Uh, the reason that we're fighting Evander Holyfield is it's, you know, one reason. That's what James Douglas wants to do. Uh, James Douglas wants to prove to the world that he can also knock out Evander Holyfield. And I have to go along with his wishes. And honestly, because uh, what we've been offered, uh, it's well, a lot. And, and, what you, what uh, you're saying, though, John, forgive me for interrupting, what you're saying sort of backs up what I said. If Don King's attitude in the aftermath of the fight in Tokyo and Mike Tyson's original attitude, even though afterwards he came back and said, yeah, I lost fair and square, if that original attitude contributed to it, then what you're basically saying is, hey, they didn't show us enough respect and that was at least a factor, maybe not the only reason, but a factor in this decision to make them stand on the sidelines and wait. Yeah, that, that, yeah you're right about that, you know, because one of the things I think that James really wanted because uh, of the negative feelings that Don King has had and expressed towards James in, in the past, and some of it legitimate uh, as, as far as his performance and stuff was concerned. Uh, he kind of sought Don King's approval uh, that finally James Douglas had, and he never got that. You know, Don King tried uh, and to, for a short period of time successfully kept James Douglas from being the heavyweight champion of the world. James Douglas didn't get the true glory and all the things that he should have got after that fight because of Don King's actions. And added to that, 
some things that's happened since then. James, again, we're going to go with James Tucker's wishes, and that's to not have absolutely anything to do with Don King, and I agree with that. Uh, and we're going to be more than fair with Don King. Buster, let me put this one to you. The early Vegas line, now that this fight apparently has been made for September, has Evander Holyfield as a two-to-one favorite against you. How do you feel about it? I, I don't have any, I don't put any stocks in the odds. I guess not after what happened in Tokyo. <laughs> you know, so I, I know how I feel and uh, the outcome will be another shocker then. But isn't it a little bit of a risk because if Holyfield beats you and it appears that he has a good chance, and I mean no disrespect toward you when I say that, but uh, he'd be ranked no less than even money by many people. And as I said, by some, a 2-1 favorite. If he beats you, then you're derailed from a possible huge payday in the rematch against Tyson. So you're taking a risk here. Well, you take a risk every time out. Um, I'm willing to accept the challenge. I'm going to be a true champion, fight the number one contender. Um, and that's all, that's, that's all I can do. John, very briefly, suppose James does lose this fight against Holyfield. Have you miscalculated then? I realize you're going to get about 75% of the, uh, the take and Holyfield 25. So percentage-wise, you can make up some of the difference, even though there'll probably be a lower gross for this fight than there would be for Tyson Douglas. But if Holyfield wins, have you possibly miscalculated and cost your fighter millions of dollars? No, I have, we haven't miscalculated or cost him anything because I told you, Bob, the bottom line, the reason we're fighting Evander Holyfield is that's what James Douglas wants to do. And I have to respect that because when he's out on the road and when he's doing all the things he wants, you know, he has to do to prepare, then he has to do what he wants to do. And I respect that. And we don't consider Evander Holyfield any risk any more than we did Mike Tyson. And in fact, Evander Holyfield won't go as long as Mike Tyson did. And then after that, he's going to take a lot of pleasure in, in uh, getting after Mike Tyson again. In and five, he won't go as long as he did before. In five seconds, John, what's the minimum take that your fighter will get out of the Holyfield fight? Many, many millions. All right. John Buster, good to talk with you again for the third time this week. And we're back after these messages from your local station. Okay, it's Douglas against Holyfield for the heavyweight championship in September. Let's get a reaction as we go to Phoenix and join the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, who's standing by with Marv Albert to call the Michael Carbajal tony Bazooka deluca fight later today on Sports World. He's with the promoter, Bob Arum, and let's go to Ferdy. With the world in constant change, it's, it's little uh, surprise that boxing has come ac across a new opening here, and the opening is in Las Vegas, Nevada. The state of Nevada has a rule that says no options will be honored in any fight, thereby leaving Douglas an open choice and an open menu to pick whatever venue he wants and whatever money he wants. The man in the head of that chase is Bob Arum. What's the setup now, Bob? Well, you're quite correct, Freddie. Under the laws of the state of Nevada, Options and exclusive promotional contracts are not allowed. Uh, there was a decision in 1988 in the district court in Nevada. Uh, that means that Buster Douglas is a free agent. That means that for this fight with Evander Holyfield, he is free to sign on with any promoter in the world, whoever offers him the best deal, and to make a deal with whatever hotel property he wants in Las Vegas, be it the Mirage or Caesars Palace or the Hilton. We finally have free enterprise in the sport of boxing. And thank you, John Johnson. Well. The main question in the audience will be, uh, and the experts, can you get the kind of money for this fight that you could have gotten for a Tyson fight? Will Douglas penalize himself financially? Well, I believe, and I've always believed, that Buster Douglas can make more fighting Evander Holyfield than a rematch with Tyson. And when John and Buster come to Las Vegas, which I understand they will be coming tonight on Steve Wynn's jet, we'll prove it to them that they are not losing any money fighting Evander Holyfield. That's the fight that should be made and apparently will be made. And it's a breath of fresh air in the sport of boxing. Two decent people like John Johnson and Buster Douglas have done what Fert Mikhail Gorbachev did in Europe. <laughs> Ferdy, I got to jump in here briefly. Obviously, it's in Bob Aaron's best interest to contend that Douglas can do as well or nearly as well because this is the fight that can potentially include Aram and maybe because of the percentages he'd have to split it down the middle with Tyson he gets the lion's share here maybe because of the percentages Douglas can come close but in terms of the overall gross 
the average guy is going to say, hey, Tyson Douglas is the one that captures the public interest, not just the hardcore fight fan, but the guy on the street who doesn't know from boxing but knows Mike Tyson is a major public figure. Now Goliath has been knocked on his back. It's Douglas Tyson that the larger number of people probably would have an interest in. Isn't that fair to say? No, it's not fair to say, Bob. We finally have a heavyweight championship bout with two decent Americans, Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield, and I think the fans appreciate decency and will buy into this fight in record numbers. Don King's cut out. Is Donald Trump cut out now, too? Well, Donald Trump can always buy another property in Las Vegas and deal himself into the stakes. But Atlantic City is history for this one. Looks that way. Bob Barron, thanks very much. Bertie Pacheco, we'll listen for you later in the day with Marv Albert from Phoenix on the Carbajal DeLuca fight. And we're back with more right after these messages from the He local thinks state. Holyfield would come off at 2 to 1 over Douglas. Tyson, 9 to 1 in a rematch, which I find surprising because some real boxing insiders think Douglas would have a good chance to beat him again. And if Tyson were to fight Holyfield now, 6 to 1. What's your re reaction? Well, Las Vegas had Buster Douglas, a 40 to 1 underdog. Shows they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to boxing. We got about 10 seconds. You think it would be better if Holyfield and Douglas fought in June, that the fight public would buy it more readily in June? Absolutely. It's hot now. Now's the time to strike. Thanks very much. We've got a strike for this commercial break, so we're out of here briefly. Then we'll rejoin Bryant Gumbel to wrap things up from golf. Stay with us. <laughs>